starts with the number three and Dale Earnhardt. Over Dale's shoulder, the diminutive warrior, Mark Martin. And the Robert Yates 28 and its new pilot, Dale Jarrett. And there are new names and new numbers, none tougher than the young gun from Indiana, Jeff Gordon, already in victory lane this young season. We have a new star with an old name, Bobby Labonte, off to a great start in the Joe Gibbs 18. Maybe the biggest question mark, what's happened to the number two? Rusty Wallace crashed at Daytona, had problems at Rockingham. He comes to Richwood today looking for answers. We're at Richmond International Raceway on TBS Sports for the Pontiac Excitement 400. Great to have you with us live. It is getting to be a nicer day than what we've seen any other time this weekend. A little bit cloudy, but temperature a little over 50 degrees right now. A very good day to go Winston Cup stock car racing. Great to have you with us today. I'm Rick Benjamin. Welcome to TBS's live coverage of the third race of the 1995 Winston Cup season. Normally, I'm inside the STP Pit Communications Center. We'll get there in just a moment, but since the weather has improved so much, we thought we'd step outside and show you exactly how nice an afternoon it has become here. Friday, it was terrible. There was snow here in Richmond. It snowed out all the on-track activities. Yesterday, the weather wasn't much better. No precipitation, but very cold, very gray. We did get the Bush Grand National race in, the Hardy's 250 that was won by Kenny Wallace, and we'll tell you more about that a little bit later on. Today, things have improved a lot. It is dry, it is clear off and on at least, and it is considerably warmer. We've got 38 drivers lined up ready to do battle for us here, over 400 laps in just a couple of moments. Many of these drivers are hoping to really begin their season once again today. Of course, Sterling Marlin won at Daytona, Jeff Gordon last week at Rockingham. One driver who traditionally does very well here at this track has had a tough early season. He's standing by with our Randy Pemberton. Well, Rusty Wallace is making his way to his Miller Genuine Draft Ford. Rusty uh, stops for a second to talk to us. Two DNFs coming in here, 193 points down, but Richmond has been good to you. In 13 starts on this three-quarter mile track, 10 top fives, four wins. How imperative is it going to be for you guys to finish and finish well today? Yeah, I think it's real imperative. There's no doubt about that. We've got a, we've got a killer car today. I mean, we got a good car. We had a good car at Daytona last week at Rockingham, but we got had a problem with the head gasket deal, and... Uh, we got it fixed right now. The car's handling good. We're ready to go. We've got a good qualifying run. It looks like the weather's going to hold off. Okay, good luck today. That's Rusty Wallace. He should definitely be a threat. Now let's go up pit road on the front row to Dr. Dick Bergeron, who's the editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine. Dick? Well, Bobby Hamilton's going to start on the outside of this front row after a career-best qualifying run yesterday. Well, starting up front's one thing, Bobby. Finishing up front's quite another. How are you going to get that job done? Well, I don't know. We Everybody, a lot of the Pontiacs are real tight yesterday, evening, but it looks like we might get a little bleed through the sun today. And if we do that, I think that'll help us. The crew done an excellent job overnight. We all met and had dinner, made some changes to the SDP Pontiac. So if we can just get that tightness out in the middle of the corner, we can lead a lot of this race. But I feel real good about it. Well, the youngest driver in the field today, 23-year-old Jeff Gordon, is also the man who's going to start on the pole. And what a role Gordon is on. At Daytona, he won the first leg of the Bush Clash. Then he went on to lead a bunch of the Daytona 500. Last weekend at Rockingham, he set a new track record, won the pole, won the race. This weekend, another new track record sitting here on the pole. But you have got to deal with the weather as well as all these other cars. How will the weather affect today's race? Well, the first couple laps are going to be real crucial. Uh, the tires are going to be real cold. Track's going to be cold. So, you know, just trying not to wreck the first couple laps is going to be difficult. But uh, once, uh, you know, once we get some laps on, on the tires, uh, I don't know. If the sun keeps peeking, you know, in and out like it has been all day, then we're going to battle with that. Um, but uh, right now, you know, we just got to see what the race is going to do. Uh, yesterday in practice, we were pretty good. We weren't the best car, but uh, we know we got to adjust on it. Uh, we know how to do it. We did it at Rockingham. If we can just uh, have a race like that again, uh, we'll be in good shape. A lot of uncertainty on pit road. Working with me on pit road today is Steve Burns. Steve? Dick, thank you. Watching this black Chevrolet and the man who sits behind the wheel, Dale Earnhardt, charged through race traffic is one of the most exciting things to see in sports today. But Dale, now you'll flat take the fans' breath away, but you're making it tough on yourself starting here from the back. <laughs> yeah, I, may, I do. Make it tough on my nerves, my team's nerves. But, uh, you know, we just uh, didn't qualify good. I took it real easy and too careful, I reckon, qualifying on a cold racetrack. So we just have to race and see where we can get to. All right, Dale, thanks a lot. He hopes that the law of averages is still on his side today. Let's go back to Rick Benjamin. 
All right, thank you, Steve. We've heard from a couple of the drivers who we expect to play a key role in today's Pontiac Excitement 400 here on TBS. Many other stories will unfold, of course, across the upcoming 400 laps. To call all the action for us, the voice of Winston Cup Racing on TBS Sports, Ken Squire. Ken? Well, thank you very much, Rick. A couple of days ago, we thought the biggest story was going to be the running of the first Virginia Iditarod. Boy, it was a snowy thing. Gentlemen, start your sled dogs. But things have worked out. 52-degree temperatures, as was pointed out. And along with all the stories, one of the biggest is right here beside me. It's great to have Ernie Urban up here. Ernie's the winner a year ago in this event. And if anybody can talk about frustration, it's certainly Ernie these days. And incidentally, watching him get through these crowds, you've got to have security at least six deep. So many people are interested in him. But what about Rusty Wallace today? Here he is, two races into the season, and you got the feeling that it's getting to him. I actually had that feeling at Daytona. Well, I tell you, you know, we got to remember that uh, Rusty had a bad part of the year at the last part of the year last year, and um, he, he had five or six or maybe seven bad races to, to lead up to this year. So we got to really re remember that. Plus, he's had a bad part start this year, and, and Rusty's uh, one of those guys that, that I think he's going to have to, uh, you know, put his chin up and um, start racing real hard, and uh, Rusty's going to be a real good factor in this race. Indeed, this is the track where he has done so well, and, of course, his short track history speaks for itself. Now, Chuck Bowne is along as well, and he's hoping that he's going to be back driving very shortly. I want to talk to you about Earnhardt. Here he is back in 26th spot today. That never seems to pose much of a problem for him. In fact, qualifying isn't a big deal. Winning's a big deal with him. But starting out back as many times as he does, sooner or later, the bowling ball or the old bullet, as they say, is going to get you. His luck's been phenomenal this far back in the field on a tight track like this. Well, Ken, you're exactly right. Dale's not known as the best qualifier, but he's one of the best at coming up through the pack. But a lot of times in Winston Cup races, we'll see a big problem in the early going in the middle of the pack. And I talked to Richard Childress, his car owner, this morning, and I said, does it make you nervous when Dale starts in the back half? He said, every time. I know those odds are against us, and he's just hoping today uh, that he'll pull it off again and won't be any different. It's one of the 38 stories we'll be watching as they get ready to crank them up here at Richmond, Virginia. Rick? Thank you, Ken. Uh, the sun has gone back behind the clouds, but there is still some blue sky out over Richmond International Raceway. We'll be back to bring you the green flag of the Pontiac Excitement 400 after this. The Pontiac Excitement 400 is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. By Pontiac, we are driving excitement. By Castrol GTX, engineered for greater protection against breakdown. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. The field has fired up on pit road here at Richmond International Raceway. 38 Winston Cup cars ready to race 400 laps for you today. It's turned a little bit gray and a little bit cool once again. Hopefully, though, we'll have no weather problems to wrap up this weekend of racing here at Richmond International Raceway. Welcome back to TBS Sports. I'm Rick Benjamin. Let's show you our AutoZone race analysis. Three quarters of a mile the length of the oval here at Richmond. And the 400 lap length of the event will cover 300 miles today. 14 degree banking in the corners here and a record purse for this event. More than a million dollars. One million and 55,000 to be exact. Now some speed marks to pay attention to. The poll here a year ago, Ted Musgrave in the Family Channel car, 123.4. Jeff Gordon with no practice yesterday beat that by well more than a mile an hour. 124.757 a new track record in qualifying. Pleased to have last year's winner of this race, Ernie Urban with his top side today. The driver who's going to try to add to his win total among active Winston Cup drivers, Darrell Waltrip, has been to victory lane here six times. He'll be hoping today to make it number seven. Let's take a look at the rest of the starting line up today. Let's go back topside to Ken Squire. On the pole at 124.7, that's Jeff Gordon, his fourth pole. And alongside is Bobby Hamilton with his best qualifying effort ever. For row two, it's Rusty Wallace and Ted Musgrave ready to roll out. In row three, Derek Cope and Ken Schrader. For row four, it's Dick Trickle and Sterling Marlin. Row five is Mark Martin, who won this race in 1990, and Link Speed. Row six is Robert Presley, fastest of the rookies, and Rick Max. For row seven, there's Dale Jarrett and Morgan Shepard. Row eight is Brett Bodine and Mike Wallace. Row nine is Darrell Waltrip and the runner-up last week at Rockingham, Bobby Lamont. In row ten, it's Kyle Petty and Jeff Bodine. Row eleven is John Andretti and Jeff Burton. Row 12, Jimmy Spencer and Terry Labonte. For row 13, heavy hitters here, Bill Elliott, who won it in 92, and a five-time Richmond winner, Dale Earnhardt. 
Row 14, it's Greg Sachs and Jeremy Mayfield. Row 15, Dave Marcus, flanked by Ricky Rudd. Row 16, the leading rookie, Ricky Craven and Todd Bodine. Row 17, Ward Burton and Joe Nemechek. Row 18, it's Michael Waltrip and Steve Kinzer, provisional starters, as is row 19, made up of Randy LaJoy and Loy Allen Jr. Five preliminary laps before they turn them loose. Taking a look at the in-car cameras for today's race, you're riding with Dick Trickle right now as he goes around this three-quarter mile, tries to get some heat into those tires. And Mark Barton again carrying an onboard camera for us. He can really be a factor on this track. Always is up in the hunt. Starting ninth today, Mark Martin. And we'll also be getting pictures today from Jeff, uh, Jeff Bodine in car number five, the seven, the XI batteries car. And before we get to the uh, end of the afternoon, we'll be joined by Randy LaJoy, starting dead last as another one of those rookies. He's all the way on the tail end, friends, as we get ready for a go. Track is shaped differently on these two ends. You talk about that 14-degree banking. We'll talk about that uh, in just a moment. Take a look at Lake Speed getting set for a run here. Best finish in this race, six back in uh, 1988, the year that Bonnet won early. That car looks good today. I tell you, Lake had a good qualifying run, and, uh, you know, we, we got to keep him in mind. Uh, you know, he's uh, got a new sponsor, and, and it's uh, with Harry Melling as far as the owner, and I, I think that they're going to probably have a good run today. Peter Suspenso and company hoping that from 10th position they're going to get it done, turn things around with car number nine. Take a look at last year's winner of the September race. There he is, Texas Terry Lavati ready to do business. He could be a factor. Took the spring uh, race to ninth position before it was over. And here's Bill Elliott's number 94, the battle of the uh, fast foods out here today. Two of them side by side. I think Bill Elliott has a little new enthusiasm this year. Back with his own race team back down there in Dawsonville, Georgia. And he's hungry. He wants to get that new team in victory lane. Here's Randy LaJoy giving you a view from the tail end of the field as they get set for a go. A lot of pressure on this race. Already you hear about driver changes in the wind. A lot of frustration with so many good cars. 47 of them here for this race. Sending home people like Jimmy Hensley is driving at active number 32. We understand you're going to get a chance at that, Chuck, real soon. Yes, I'm going to be back out there uh, very soon, I hope. I've got a big test coming up soon. All right, feel ready. Here we go for the Pontiac Excitement 400 on TBS. He jumped and out. Man, he really took off there. He just caught him a little bit of sleep, nailed that gas, jumped off the lead. He's got a good lead in turn one, brought Rusty with him. with these cold tires and these cold temperatures, but uh, so far everything's looking pretty good. Rusty Wallace down on the inside trying to take that lead back at the end of lap one. He's down on the bottom. Rusty has a lead in a while, so um, I'm sure he's going to jump in there and, and try to lead a lap, and uh, it looks like he's going to. Whoa. little touch and go there. The second turn gets real tight with two cars race off there. That uh, wall comes up in a hurry, doesn't it, Ernie? Sure does, you know, and uh, Rusty got the preferred line, and uh, he's going to lead um, lap three, it looks like, and uh, I'm sure that's going to make Rusty feel awful happy. And Bob? that's the first lap that Rusty has led since back in October at Charlotte, Chuck. <laughs> Who would have thought that? That car's been so consistent and so strong, and maybe he's going to put some of them problems behind him for a while. Look at Bobby Hamilton stick his feet in the fire, number 43, right down on the inside and going up to second. We heard Bobby in the early going, or in the, before the race started in the interview, saying if he could get push out of the middle of the corner, he thinks he can lead a lot of this race. There's Earnhardt sweeping along on the outside out of two, the place where you can't pass. Right up there, thank you very much. Making a move on John Andretti. Coming up on Terry Labonte. Just in front of him, Jimmy Spencer. Around down, ready down the main straightaway to complete lap number four. He's up to 23rd. He's picked up three spots. It's a little bit early to really take advantage of that outside lane. I don't think there's a lot of rubber out there yet. He's abusing the tires pretty good, but he is making it work. He's gaining on them inch by inch. Jeremy Mayfield running that high outside as well. 
I, I tell you, I don't think Dale Earnhardt's going to worry about abusing them tires. He's going to worry about getting to the front. And, uh, you know, I've raced with him a lot. And then the first thing he's after is uh, to try to get it out of that lap traffic or, or the slower cars and get up into the guys that he normally races. Back there in 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. What a struggle there. Did you see Rick Nash in the one? I tell you, Mark Martin was one of the cars. He's an in-car camera today, and uh, he's one of the cars that really ran good in practice. And uh, Opel got some trouble with the top tire. Tire down. Left rear tire flat on Jeff Bodine. Handful for Bodine trying to get in. Well, that's too bad. It doesn't look like he's going to get a caution. He's just going to have to come in under green and change it. He'll be down a couple of laps this early in the race. That's going to be hard to come back from. Randy Pemberton standing by as Jeff Bodine eases on to pit road. Big problem early, going a lap down. Meanwhile, Wallace stays out in front. Let's go to Randy. Well, they're waiting for Jeff Bodine to enter his pit stall. They're saying flat left rear tire. They're going to go to work on the left side. Rich Wolowski is the left rear tire changer. That they, could have, they did have difficulty getting the car up on the jack because of that left rear tire being flat. They got him on now. Pretty good pit stop. Oh, possible broken rear end on the seven is shattered as he left pit road. 15.8, the time on pit road for Jeff Bodine. And down another lap. We're at, at lap nine, working lap ten. Wallace out in front as he continues to build up a lead on Jeff Gordon in second. And here you see the interval as he sweeps out of turn four. Hamilton riding third. Dennis Terry in fourth. Musgrave runs in fifth, followed by Mark Martin in sixth, and Rick Mass. Well, Rusty's doing what he does best on these flat trip tracks. He's just setting the pace right now. In the meantime, those other guys are racing as hard as they can because they know he's going to be in their rear view mirror wanting to lap him pretty soon. There you see Rick Mast in number one, running back in seventh spot right with him comes Dick Trickle in eighth, the number 15 car. Just behind him is Schrader in ninth. Sterling Marlin, and here comes Earnhardt, still working the bottom under Levante. That's in the 19th position now, as he and Terry have both been moving up through traffic out here. Spotters, I presume, are absolutely key on a three-quarter mile track like this, Ernie. I tell you, you know, the spotters have really got to keep a good eye on the, the racetrack and, and in front of their cars and all, also behind their cars. Uh, you know, if somebody drunk, dumps some oil down here, you can show that to the heartbeat. Jimmy Spencer being challenged by Earnhardt. Spencer dives down to the bottom, throws the block. Just in front of him, Kyle Petty. And on the outside, Brett Fodine in the Junior Johnson car. Good skirmish there. Right now, Dale's just having to wait to see which, which of these two are going to go, Spencer or Bona. They're too wide in front of him. And they've got a hole on the inside. Kyle picking up one. It looked like Brett broke loose just a little bit off turn four there. He's a little bit uh, loose in the back end, it looked like. And they work him out, as you can see from this picture. It's going to cost him, too. It looks like they're going to sneak on by him underneath him. I'll tell you one thing about this race track. It seems like if you abuse the tires at all, it, they just never come back, you know, like when Brett spun those tires, it seems like you can lose two tenths and you just never get that back. John Andretti staying right in the thick of this one in that number 37. Now, shot on the inside. Spencer slipped up just a little bit in the middle of turns one and two and they all took advantage of it. Earnhardt's car looks really good through the middle of the corner and that's what it takes to go fast here at Richmond. How tricky is turn number two out here, Ernie? I tell you, when you come off turn two, you, you come from a fairly good bank, and it just completely flattens out. And, uh, you know, that's that's a place that you usually end up getting loose. And uh, Dale's car looks real good through there. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what, he, what he's doing uh, when he gets uh, at the faster cars. Earnhardt up to 17th, and here comes the 24. Gordon looking for Wallace again. Meanwhile, Randy has this report on pit road. We've certainly documented Rusty Wallace's difficulties in the first two races. He dodged a bullet yesterday in practice. He broke a rear end gear, and if that practice was 15 minutes shorter, it would have happened right here about lap five today. 
trying some new graphics for you folks at home today to keep track of laps and of the field as we go through the race. We hope you like it as something a little different. Let's see how it works out. So, it's the Pontiac Excitement 400, and right now it's exciting watching Rusty Wallace try to hold off Jeff Gordon. back on TBS Sports, Richmond Fairgrounds, Richmond International Raceway. You're watching Rusty Wallace trying to hold off Jeff Gordon. And there's the third place car. A bit of a surprise now as the number 12, Derek Cope and the Bobby Allison colors moving well through the field, takes over in third. Bobby Hamilton to fourth and falling back into fifth is the number six car of Mark Martin. There's Mark rolling on to fifth. Just behind him comes Musgrave. like Jeff Gordon's able to close back up a little bit on Rusty Wallace. Rusty had checked out and looked like he was threatening to pull away from everybody, but I think he's coming back to Gordon just a little bit now. Yeah, he sure did. You know, um, I, I've been watching my stopwatch, and uh, Rusty's backed up to about a 23 flat, and, uh, you know, I think the race pace is going to be a little more than that right now, and, and that's Jeff Gordon's uh, looking at that. Take a look at uh, number three, Earnhardt, still on a roll. He is now up into the 11th position. He's created spots with the 28. Dale Jarrett, as he comes from 26 spot, and Lake Speed right in there as well. It's amazing. You know, I was just telling Chuck during our commercial break, uh, you know, you're, you're riding along as fast as you can go, and you know Earnhardt started 22nd. You look in your mirror, and it's like, wow. He's already here, and it's not, that? it's um, lap 28, so uh, it's amazing. Richard Childress following every move of his car, number three. He's standing by with Dick Berger. And he's standing way high up on a toolbox here in Pitt Road, Ken. Richard, I'm wondering, is it setting your heart to flutter watching Earnhardt pass all these cars? Well, you know, it always makes, you know, keeps us concerned whenever we're trying to come up through the field. But, you know, he's good getting up through traffic, but uh, I think we'll be okay. Well, oh, it's a good ride watching him run. Going after 10th position, and Schrader is Earnhardt from 26. I think Earnhardt's already out of the woods as far as worrying about an early accident or whatever. These cars are sorted out and spread out enough right now that uh, he's up there almost in the top 10 and, and got things well under control right now. Coming around to complete 30. There's your battle. Schrader gives up just a little the inside. You don't have to give up much to have a handful of Earnhardt. Dale can still keep that thing right down on that bottom of that inside part of that racetrack. And, you know, that's the key here in Richmond. And you can do that after 31 laps of hard running like he's been doing, passing a lot and everything. You know, it says a lot to the way his car is working. Tenth, Earnhardt. The thing is, is um, a lot of the fans uh, need to look at is the way Dale's car handles, he gets through the middle of the corner, and that's what it's all about here at Richmond, or a lot of the race tracks we run at. The middle of the corner is the thing that we fight on all day long in practice, and, you know, the thing we want to get in the race. So now, Earnhardt turns it up a notch and goes looking for Bud Morris, car number 15 in ninth position. There's 15, the trickle in the Quality Care Ford. That's a new ride for Dick this year. I think he's really excited about uh, 1995. He's really enjoying that team so far. And he's gotten off to a, a pretty good start. He's been pretty competitive, but uh, had a few little problems here and there. But I think he's excited about 95. Ernie, how far do you go and get full bite on these tires? You know, we're up to 33 laps complete now before it, they begin to... We're, we're, we're basically starting into that. You know, now the chassis are going to going to start really playing a good effect and uh you know right now we're going to start seeing some cars get loose up off turn two mainly um you'll actually get loose later off the corner late in turn four um you'll get loose way up off the corner and, he, and you wonder why but that's where it seems to break loose no question that Earnhardt is checking everybody actually Wallace despite running in traffic those leaders have come back a little he's reeling them all in right now including Dick Trickle the ninth place car I've um, been sitting there clocking Earnhardt some, and I've been clocking Rusty Wallace some, and, and when they get a clear track, Rusty and Earnhardt are running, you know, real close to the same speed. 
So here's Ricky Rudd, and you can see that car lift a little as it comes out of the turn two. He's back at the moment in 22nd position. How tough is Dale Earnhardt here at Richmond International Raceway, Ricky? Well, Dale's tough anywhere you go. You know, like, if you're up there good enough to race Dale, then you know you've got a car capable of winning. That team is, is there just about week in and week out. So we hope we can get cars prepared for the days when we go up there and race Dale. I probably enjoy racing him more than I do anybody else because it seems like it brings out the best in me. Uh, we, like I said, we've gotten into it a few times in years past, but in recent days, uh, you know, Dale's raced real clean, and, uh, and, I, and I return the favor back to him. So it's just good hard racing. Ricky Rudd is real smooth on these flat racetracks. He won up at Loudoun, New Hampshire last summer, and that's similar to, to Richmond here, and he knows how to get that car off the corners on these flat racetracks. He's moved from 30th up to the 22nd position. I'll tell you what's surprising me, though, up in front are those Fords. You know, the Chevys have dominated the last two races, but here they are, first and third, Wallace and Cope. Now Cope is sliding back a little. Mark Martin just went by him, so you've got Fords first, third, and fourth. Pontiac of Bobby Hamilton staying in fifth. Chevrolet of Jeff Gordon is second. So, getting down to 40 laps complete this time by. Rusty Wallace continues to dominate in the Richmond Pontiac Excitement 400. But the man everybody's watching is Earnhardt. A huge crowd on hand despite the chilly weather at Richmond International Raceway in Richmond, Virginia for the Pontiac Excitement 400. You're with us live on TBS Sports. Great to have you with us today. Rick Benjamin of the STP Pit Communications Center today. We told you at the top of the broadcast, 38 cars took the green today. 48 cars showed up here to try to qualify. Here are some of the drivers who failed to make the program today. Gary Bradbury, rookie contender in the Jimmy Means car. Steve Grissom, who was in the top 10 in Winston Cup points after two weeks. He didn't qualify. Jay Hedgecock didn't make it, neither did Jimmy Hensley. Ben Hess, Davy Jones driving the U.S. Air car. He crashed hard here yesterday. Billy Standridge and Kenny Wallace, who won yesterday's Bush Grand National Race. He didn't make the show either, so a lot of drivers had to go home early. Jeff Bodine had early problems, speaking of early. He had a tire go down on the left rear. We're told it was a faulty valve stem that caused that problem. Jeff on the button trying to make up time. He lost at least one lap as he works to the outside of the Steve Kinzer automobile who is also a couple of laps down. Meantime, we work toward the 50 lap mark and Rusty Wallace working through lap traffic. We've gone clean, not a yellow yet, but it's been a Rusty Wallace benefit show so far this afternoon, Ken Squire. Thank you, Rick. And two laps down is that uh, Bodine Number seven car, the Xerox car, trying to make up some time. Saw a great run yesterday that almost put a guy back a couple of laps after he had fallen off like that. And maybe he can do it again. Now uh, there's our new graphic giving you the standings. There's the rookie standings at the present time. Where those leading rookie candidates are in the field. And when you see that come up, it'll have a lap. It may be a lap or two back from where we are on this three-quarter mile track, but we'll give you some of the depth so you know where your favorites are running and keep you updated as much as we can throughout the afternoon with that. You know, the kind of pace Rusty Wallace has been setting with about 50 laps into this thing, and we haven't had a caution yet, and I'll bet a lot of these race drivers are wishing that caution would come out so they could come down pit road and make some adjustments to their race drivers and try to get up there with that number two car. Earnhardt moving around, getting belief. Uh, Marlin, and he is just closing out everybody here now. That puts him up to a sixth position. But about to put a lap on Craven, had those two 16th position finishes in the first two races of the year. Boy, we thought this was going to be an advantage for Jeff Gordon if there was a lot of green, but it looks like, once again, it's an advantage for Earnhardt. Well, they still had pretty limited practice here, you know, with the weather. They did get a full happy hour last night, a one-hour practice session where a lot of adjustments were being made. But Earnhardt's a veteran. He, uh, he gets pretty good at Rusty Wallace. Here he is up around Randy LaJoy, a lap car down on the inside. Remember, he started in 38th position. We're watching Kyle Petty come in. This is on lap 53 that Kyle Petty pits. That's a pretty good car right there, Todd Bodine, the 75 car, going down a lap already. Boy, you just get off a little bit, and uh, you can find yourself lapping these three-quarter mile racetracks. That's the 27th position that he just put a lap down at 53 laps into this race. 
Bernie Urban, you surprised we've gone this far without somebody making a miscue, stepping over the line? No, I tell you, I really am not. You know, uh, Richmond's one of those racetracks that, that we can get some 100, 150 lap runs and, uh, you know, before somebody has a problem, you know. But now we looked at the Bush race yesterday and a lot of guys had motor trouble and stuff and, uh, you know, now we now we, maybe we're going to see some of that. Now we're having Kyle have a little bit of trouble and looks like they're they're pushing the car off trying to get it to start and you know? uh, that's not a fun fun thing to do up to about 50 seconds already and things aren't working here's randy guys he broke the shifter kyle petty difficulties after getting off to a pretty fair start this year they tried to get the car in the gear broke the shifter cannot shift it gonna pull it behind the wall kyle will probably have to work on the car from inside while the guys go underneath tough break for the course light driver the 1986 winner of this 400, Kyle Petty, goes back behind the wall. Hard day for Kyle Petty. That is tough. You know that the guys work all, all week and uh, have a shifter break. It's not Kyle's fault. It's just some part that broke. And, uh, you know, there we see Jeff Gordon. And uh, now we got Mark Martin, and he's up into third. And, and uh, he's, he's running really good. And Mark was one of the guys in practice that uh, really showed us a lot shows a lot on any racetrack he runs. He just gives it everything he's got. I think it was Kyle that was talking about him and said, if you're going to uh, compare uh, drivers to their mascots, you would take a guy like Martin and compare him to a pit bull, because once he gets hold, he just never lets go. Those guys are running real strong, but look who's coming. Dale Earnhardt Scott, Bobby Hamilton, and he's just about, uh, he's only barely out of sight of Mark Martin and Derek Cope. And he's done this all under green from that 26 starting spot. It's uh, impressive. Levin going a lap down as he gets around Bobby Hamilton. Earnhardt going around a second time on the 11 car. Down the main straightaway. What a run he is making. This is happening in the 60th lap, folks. Also this morning, the driver of that 11 car there, uh, Brett Bodine, has uh, come down with a pretty strong case of the flu. He's not feeling too chipper today. I don't know if it's affecting his performance or not, but it's no fun out there with the flu. And they say that Chad Little is standing by to take over, who won those first two races of the year and then had an engine go. Broke a timing chain yesterday in his effort for three in a row. So, Bobby Hamilton falls back. He's to six. And here you see Earnhardt to fifth and back in the garage area. Work continues on Kyle Petty Shippers. Seventy-four thousand six hundred thirty-four seats all sold out five months ago. Weather's turned out perfectly. Well, Bill France is looking down on this one. We got some France weather, and down in uh, the garage area, it's a little tough to shift, as uh, Randy Pemberton can tell you about on that car 42. No question about it. There it is. Reverse, first, second, third, and fourth. He downshifted coming in the pit road to get tires. It's just an aluminum piece. Very lightweight, Kyle desperately wants to get back out on the track. They went to the truck to get another shifter to replace it. I'm telling you, this crew is just, they're broken hearted over this. Obviously, Kyle's been working out during the, during the winter time because, uh, you know, break that shifter out. Uh, that uh, exercise will get you, Ernie. Yeah, it is. And, you know, Mark Martin keeps doing it, and he's still leading, so uh, we're, we're running in the front. Joe Nemechek about to go a lap down in that number 87. He's running 24th. That would leave 23 cars in the lead lap at lap 68. And down on pit road, we note that Jeff Burton has brought in the Stavola number eight car. That's at lap 69 for you folks keeping track. We've also got uh, Ricky Rudd coming in for a pit stop. We, I tell you, yesterday in the Bush Grand National Race, we had a lot of people that the tires were wearing out in about 50 laps. So, uh, for, so Steve's in the pit with uh, Rusty, or, uh, Ricky Rudd. Ernie, you and Chuck were exactly right. There are a lot of cars out here early today. Billy Engel, the crew chief, said, boy, Ricky's doing all he can. We're going to make a four-tire change. No. Nice stop on four tires, 22 seconds, guys. That's yeah. getting it. Yeah, I think these guys that aren't liking their cars on used tires are starting to hit pit road. When we were at break, Mike Wallace came in, and so did Robert Presley. And I see Michael Walker has just made a, an appearance on pit road for four tires, too. So these cars are really starting to type bad now. Oh, we may have a problem here on car number 75. He's off his feet. 75, Todd Bodine slowing down. You saw Trickle go sliding underneath him, as well as Brett Bodine shot beneath that number 75. 
I'll tell you what, what I was saying in the Bush Grand National race yesterday, they were only allowed two sets of tires um, after the race started, and there, there is the deal is Todd is getting real loose off the corner, and it may be from tire wear. There's not been any practice up here this week, very little. So uh, we had the race yesterday, and uh, you know, not much rubber on the racetrack, and that's what makes a lot of tire wear. Well, there's Todd. Oh, we got trouble up in turn four. Jeremy Mayfield oh. and almost took out the car number 24 of Jeff Gordon. And somebody did get a piece of it. That's Joe Nemechek's car that's in trouble. That yeah, looks like uh, Nemechek. Joe Nemechek got in the back of Jeff Gordon pretty good. I believe he broke his engine oil cooler, and that's why we're seeing all that smoke as hot oil pumped on the exhaust. Gordon sure had a close call on that one. You know, uh, we'll, we'll see it on the replay, and uh, it's amazing. Nemechek, it looks like something stuck in the back of his car. Um, and I don't know, I didn't really see him actually get into Jeff Gordon. Got a replay here for you, Ernie. There we show Rusty Wallace. Oh, there. Th Morgan Shepard gets into the back of Jeremy Mayfield. Rusty's going to get on by clean, but Gordon's slowing down and waiting. Boom. Okay, yeah, Gordon did, did hit the back of uh, and Joe just did hit gone, the back of him. Joe had just gone down a lap. That's a really bad break for Joe all the way around. Did Morgan Shepard get a little piece there of uh, Mayfield to start that thing? That's what it looked like. Pit Road's where the action is. Let's go to Randy. Rusty Wallace is in. First car in on Pit Road. Billy Wilbur works on the right front tire. All three leaders are in the pits. Dick Berger up Pit Road. The Rusty Wallace team goes to work on the left side. Very important to get a good stop right here. Take the pressure off the crew. Rusty's out of the way, Dick. Well, there's no apparent damage to the front end of Jeff Gordon's car, although a tire has fallen loose from Bernhardt's car right in front of him, and he just hit it. And they were talking about that in the driver's meeting. The crews are very concerned about these tires rolling around on pit road, and Gordon just got one. I don't think Jeff Gordon had any damage to the front of his car, only the back, and the back doesn't play much part as long as that spoiler's still where it's supposed to be, and it looks like the rear spoiler is fine. I don't think that damage will cause Jeff any problems at all. Here's Gordon coming around. You take another look here, folks. After he really got drop kicked by Joe Nemechek. Nemechek got there with his own team. He was a victim of circumstance. The rest of the field is on pit road. Jeremy Mayfield is now in. Jimmy Spencer's in. Jeff Burton back. Craven. Mike Wallace. Brett Bodine. Jeff Bodine. All on pit road. Kinzer's come in. I tell you, I think the only problem Jeff Gordon's got is in his mirror. Um, Dale Earnhardt coming up, and uh, it's amazing how he's come through the traffic. And you know he did it last week. He's done it a lot of weeks, but uh, this week's uh, been the most dominating thing that I've seen him do. This incident took place at lap 73. Rusty Wallace leading at that point with Mark Martin in. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway, the Pontiac Excitement 400 ready to go green. Rusty Wallace on the outside out of turn four. Michael Waltrip alongside. Mark Martin will restart second. Doyle Ford drops the green and Wallace hauls him off into turn one. Ken? Back underway at 79. Lap 79 and Wallace busts back out in front. Jumps up to a good advantage. Maybe 12 car lengths going into three with Mark Martin coming right back. It was Kyle Petty who, along with calling him a bulldog, said he was like a chihuahua. And somebody said, is Mark that because it's true? Mark Martin, Martin is backing out and slowing down, going to one. It was four wide something on this on car number six and still slowing down. The field's got it. Oh, that's unfortunate. He, he must have a flat tire or he lost an engine. Oh, uh, flat tire. That flat rear tire is flat. Oh, that, that's costly. Running right that restart in front of everybody, but the experience of these guys, they all got through it. I tell you, Chuck, you know, we just haven't had that many flat tires. It's uh, been something different, and um, uh, it's unbelievable because now we're starting to see some. I think Jeff Rodanzo may have been the bumper of another car knocking that valve core out. Sometimes that happens. That valve stand gets a bumper on it. They go flat quick. Randy Pemberton is standing by with Mark Martin. Well, it's a flat left rear. They're not even going to change the left front. Steve Neal normally really changes the left front. Wow, that tire is absolutely destroyed as Mark Martin goes a lap down. Troy Martin changed the tire, and they're gone in a way. Wow. 11.8 on pit road. Well, if they call this guy a chihuahua because they, you've been pushing away and he keeps on coming back at you. We've got a long time to see if he can do it today. We're at lap 83 or 400 as Mark Martin gets out here. 
He'll be defiant and he'll fight right to the finish. There's no one with more heart than this guy. Well, he's got one thing on his side. He's got a long way to go in this race. If his car's good enough, he should get some opportunities to make that lap set and get right back in the thick of it. Look at that tire. Oh, we've got trouble up in turn four. Spinning around is Dale Jarrett, and caution is not out. Track is clear, and it keeps on going. That was wild. He got it all the way around, and there is no flag on the track. Well, that's going to hurt his track position, not getting the yellow. Uh, just put him a long way behind. And it will flat spot those tires for sure, right, Ernie? Well, they've got some debris out there. They just found some debris on the track. That's going to save him, I think. They're bringing out the yellow flag. Caution is coming out now. Actually, that debris is down in turn number one, they're saying, Chuck. I can see it. See, there's a piece up here right under the light as you go into the first turn. Well, that was under the caution light. The incident was up in four. We got a piece of it for you to look at. Looks like a part of a bumper of a car, the fiberglass. He can't, spun around. I didn't see what started it. Can't really tell what, what started it, you know. Um, you know, those tires are cold, and um, that's what we have a, a problem with. Uh, you know that you just maybe not got him hot enough to actually uh, get a lot of grip or maybe you got hit from behind <laughs> Yeah, <that laughs> you just be. don't know if you don't uh, But restarts Look, the traffic looks, looks like a little bit of uh, yeah, somebody uh, got the left rear with board. the left rear Down to Dick Bergman with Ray Everham Ray. How about that car? Is it all right? Yeah, it's just uh, got a little sheet metal in the back I guess um, there was a wreck up there Jeff slowed down somebody got in the back of it, but it, it's all right Rick Benjamin all right, Dick, we're here at the SDP Pit Communications Center. We're going to show you the uh, track description. First of all, we want to remind you the official handbook. The official guidebook is back for 1995, and it's available for you. We'll tell you a little more about how to obtain that in just a couple of moments. The official directory is your complete racing guide with track maps and uh, information on seating charts, driver information, and a whole lot more. The official directory bringing us our track description here today at Richmond. Three quarters of a mile. The turns are banked 14 degrees, an 8-degree bank on the front stretch, which is really uh, semicircular almost. The back stretch only a 2-degree banking, and it's 860 feet long uh, in, that, uh, in that regard in terms of the track description here at Richmond. I want to remind you to pick up your copy of the official directory with the latest weather and tickets and qualifying types, even a trip planning guide, too. And here's how to get your copy. 1-800-RACE-345, Post Office Box 100-191, Atlanta at 303-84. Pick up your copy of the official directory before you go racing your first time this year. As cars move off of pit road, Mark Martin in car number six, Dale Jarrett back on the racetrack. We go on board with Mark Martin. He had that tire problem in the left rear. They changed it, gave him a tank of, uh, or a can of fuel anyway, and put him back out on the racetrack. Martin up through the gears down toward turn three. Randy Pemberton is standing by also on pit road. Randy? Well, I'll tell you, I miss uh, cued on that. It was Richard Mallentine changing that left rear for Mark Martin. They got the tire back over here. Guess what? Broken valve stem. I don't know if we're seeing a pattern here or not. Uh, both he and Dale Jarrett came in and pitted under that caution. And we're talking about uh, four tires for both of those automobiles. I've also noticed the fact that uh, a lot of buildup on these tires. Jack Roush looking pensively up here, sitting on top of the uh, toolbox. Boy, a, a heartbreak for these guys. Going back to green, Ken. After a second caution, we're back to green. And the leaders look like this. Wallace in first. Gordon in second. In between them, Loy Allen a lap down. And Earnhardt finds himself to third and challenges for second spot. He's there. He's going to get it. He's got second position. He's got a lap car between himself and Rusty Wallace. But you can bet yeah, Earnhardt wants to get up there and get his time going to go in as well. Ford in first, Chevy in second. You can bet Rusty's not going to let him uh, lead a lap if he can. He's going to try to do everything he can do to lead all he can. Wallace trying to repulse Dale Earnhardt. Boy, what we have seen this a few times in this racetrack. You know, I tell you, we watched this again last week. And, uh, you know, Dale and Rusty had some great races going through the back of last week. And, uh, you know, they, they all finished in a different spot. But um, it was some good racing. The Napa standings back through the field. Try to give it to you in more depth after that caution period. As they were then running. Derek Koch side to side with Jeremy Mayfield. He's a lap down. And Derek's in the fourth position. Wanting to get up there and get Gordon to run for third. Joe Nemechek continues to dart in and out of the pits here. As he tries to get his car back together after he got really collected in the back end of this car. Number 24, Jeff Gordon. 
Jeff Starr didn't seem to be real strong on the restart. Uh, maybe it'll come on another four or five laps. These guys play with their tire air pressures quite a bit when they put on a boot set during the caution periods. And sometimes it takes them a few more laps to come in than another guy. So I don't know if he's just uh, not quite as strong as he was or if he's uh, waiting for it to come in. Saw Ricky Rudd there. He's back in 29th position. You're riding with Dick Crickle. He's been having some problems as well this afternoon, but still holds on in 14th slot. Just in front of him, Bobby Hamilton in 13th. And they say it was a piece off oh, the yeah. back of that car that caused that caution. Sure does look like it. The big sign on the rear is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Want my money back. I'll tell you one thing, with the in-car camera shot, it looked like he was pretty smooth on the steering wheel for Dick Trickle. He'll saw on one as much as anybody, and it must not be driving too bad because uh, his hands weren't jumping around like they usually do. Next time by, 95 complete, and it's a clean shot for Earnhardt as he goes after Wallace. Again, there's Trickle looking for Bobby Hamilton just in front of him and working right there in 15th. You see Ward Burton in the Hardy's car. Oh, my gosh. He looks like he's molded into that seat, doesn't he? <laughs> Wow, that tight on that steering wheel, isn't he? Uh-uh. But that's pretty smooth for Dick. I remember a couple years ago, he used to really have those hands going around. Yeah, where's his coffee? Where's his cigarette? I tell you, if we get back on uh, Rusty Wallace, uh, he's got to look in his mirror because uh, Bernhardt is really, really bearing down on him. And so it doesn't look like he's going to be able to hold him off because uh, he's running a little better than he is. That's a great shot. Either the lighting's right or something. You can really see him working out there and see, <laughs> see him also alive. looking back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, TV puts it's never worked for me. On you, doesn't it? <laughs> there he is, 53, looking like he's, he's 34. Done. He's done. Here's the battle for the lead, folks. Wallace versus Earnhardt. Pontiac Excitement 400, Richmond International Raceway. Doesn't get better than this. Ooh, a little touch. A little touch. Just a hello. Take the groove. Hello. Oh. That's what's going to be fun if Dale's going to take the lead here in a second. Rusty's going to come right back. <laughs> Don't you think, Ernie? You can, you can bet that, <laughs> that Rusty's going to say, oh, I'm going to get on your corner panel a little bit. <laughs> Wallace is not letting go. They're having fun. That's what it's all about right there. They, they right. say you can run anywhere, right, Chuck? Anywhere on this racetrack, except right here in two. That's a little touchy. It's a unique racetrack for a team relatively fast. Only a three-quarter mile. It's the best two-groove track on the circuit for a flat racetrack. It's, it's very impressive. Oh. We see some great shows here. <laughs> Seeing a great show right now, folks, here on TBS. Earnhardt versus Wallace, Chevrolet versus Ford. I tell you, Dip, Dale Earnhardt's not going to let it, let him let him get away with whatever. And here comes Gordon coming up on, behind him. And it's going to be a three-car battle Jeff here. likes seeing those two side to side. That gives him a clear track to close in. And, and they know is. they're abusing them tires, too. Yeah. And he's got a three-car race for the lead. This is what it's all about in racing, you know. Um, I, I, if you had a camera right now, Dale Earnhardt would probably have a big smile on his face, you know. Uh, you know, I know he would be, and probably Rusty Wallace would, too. Well, that number three led the 99th lap, picked up those five bonus points. Now we've got a lap car coming up. Jimmy Spencer, it's going to be exciting to see Ooh, how they yes, that, that could be real exciting. Oh, they're going to go three deep. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Are they going to make it? Rusty's going to try to box him. Yep. They're going to be three wide coming down the back and right away. Jeff Gordon says thank you very much. Ooh, how about that for a shot? <laughs> that was a break Rusty needed, though. He's able to pull out on Earnhardt right now. But here's Gordon with a little bit cooler tires. He'll give him a run now. Earnhardt did get up there and lead a lap, though, it looked like to me. I believe he, he yeah, got his he, bonus points. I went over to see Earnhardt this morning, about two hours before the race, sound asleep, having a nap all by himself. Actually, he had the TV on. I, I think he was watching the TV because he was being dozed off. <laughs> He's not dozing now, folks. Make he is day. playing the Eastwood. <laughs> He's smiling right now. Cause that's this is what Dale Earnhardt really thrives for, is uh, having a good, good race. And, uh, you know, he, he loves to be in, in the thing he's in. I think he's going to try to pass him on the outside now because he's tried the inside. Rusty's going to give him the outside. And uh, let's see what he's got there. Make him work. That's, that's for sure. He's Run those working. tires down. I bet the crew's a little interested in how this thing is going. They haven't left for a while. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, they've got their own monitor. <laughs> they're watching that RCA deal. They're, they're being able to hear us. Hey, guys, can you hear us? 
<laughs> they're not going to admit it. <laughs> they're enjoying it just as much as we are, though. Even though they build and prepare that car, it's, it's fun to see this and door racing. So are 74,000 fans here, and they're going to add another 8,000 seats, folks. But I understand they're sold out already for that show in September here. This track is a bit of an enigma. They call it a short track, but it acts like a super speedway, doesn't it, Ernie? I mean, really, you say that sounds like a publicity line, but this really does work like a super speedway. Hey, you know, my my uh, thing about this racetrack, I really feel like it's a short track. Um, you know, it's just a lot like Wilkesboro, a lot like Martinsville. We got trouble with Jeff Gordon. He's uh, either had something break or something and uh, coming off turn four, slowed down totally. Jeff Gordon, the winner last week at Rockingham, the man that sat on the pole with a new record, pulls it in. He slowed down a, a lot coming off turn four. It's like he just like they just popped out of gear or, or broke a motor or something. It, it looks just like, like he's under no power slow. whatsoever. I don't know if he's even going to be able to get back to the pit road. They may have to bring out a caution I think to push him in. They'll have to bring out a caution, I think. And um, you know, Hopefully, Randy will be able to uh, talk with uh, Ray Everham. Yeah, he looks like he's only coasting. Yeah, right. Lap one, oh, I don't know. At this point, he's come all the way around. It looks like he's got a little fire in there. Not very much. There's Ray Everham there. Jeff Gordon, seventh in points, trying to get it back on pit road. Big change in this race, folks. No change up front. Wallace versus Earnhardt. More shortly. Forty years ago at Richmond, they were ranting and raving about Tim Flock when he won the Grand National Race here on his way to winning 18 events in the season of the Chrysler 300. And now the debate is right here. Rusty Wallace on the outside, Ford Thunderbird, and the Chevrolet Monte Carlo down on the inside of Earnhardt. This is the one they'll be writing letters about and stomping and storming. We're at lap 115. 115. I tell you, all the people are standing up. This is what they all pay for. A lot of good money and sit out, out here in the cold to be able to watch a great race. And they're having it today. It's amazing. Dale likes that inside. That's his best chance. He tried the outside a few laps ago. Couldn't get it done there, but Rusty's car is awfully good. The we must find out what happened in the Jeff Gordon car. Let's get a report down there from Dick Berger. In the Gordon car, he is behind them. He's out on pit road. It's running as if the thing is out of gas. It's got fuel pressure, but it's not got the right amount of fuel going to the carburetor. This is the sort of thing you might have happen to you on a Sunday afternoon drive, and you pull into a gas station and say, "Well, fix this thing." Well, there's a lot of things that could cause the problem he's got right now. Every time he steps on the throttle, the engine slows down and dies. Right now, the engine has died on pit road. They've considered bypassing the fuel filter. They are many, many laps down, and they do not have the Problem fixed. I tell you, Earnhardt and Rusty, it's, just, it's amazing. They're still side by side. Rusty's not going to give up. He's going to run as hard as he can on the outside to make Earnhardt earn everything he's got. 24, now seven laps down. Talk about wrestling. Look at these two trying to get a hold on the other I think one. The rest of the field is loving this because it increases their chances of staying on that lead lap. You know, they're. Uh, it's got to slow down about three or four tenths a lap running side to side like that, but they're both so strong they can still maintain a good lead. I tell you, they're still stretching the lead out. You know, right now they, they keep pulling away from uh, Derek Cope, I think, in fourth place or third place, and um, they just keep pulling away. If anybody thinks this is planned, it's not. This is just NASCAR stock guy racing at its best. Uh, it just happens these two uh, know how to do it. They get their car so well that uh, they can pull this off. I tell you, this is one of the only race tracks we can actually watch this in because uh, at Richmond, the outside groove later in the day seems to start coming up and, uh, you know, able to, to start running better on the outside. And Dale, the reason Dale can't get by him is because he can't use up the outside to, to, to work up. Just like right there, he tried yeah, to get the tried to maneuver down. around that the, to get him uh, up onto the outside. And, and that way, he has to ease off that throttle when he's coming off that corner. My gosh, he's getting a half a car length on him now, though. I think he's, yeah. uh, he's, he's got the upper hand right now. Let's put it that way. A little rub, he'd have it. <laughs> little transition back to third here. They're about three seconds back. That crew in third spot. So it's not helping Cope, but what a run Allison's car is having with Derek Cope of Spanaway, Washington at the controls. Look at this fight for first. Go back to uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth for a moment. 
Sterling, Marlin, Labonte in there as well as we look at fourth, fifth, and sixth. And there are both Labontes there. That's a good race there, and you can see the Derricks pulled out quite a ways in third position, but this, this race from fourth on back, uh, they're all bumper to bumper nose to tail. That's a good race. That is a good race. But there's a great race up in front. These two guys are just dishing it out for the lead. There you see Sterling Marlin, and then you see Bobby Labonte, Terry Labonte right there. Jeff Bodine giving us these shots. Remember, he's a lap or two down, had trouble early. And what's going to come off? Trouble. Had, had a dodge stem pop out too, just like uh, uh, Jeff put up. Yeah, the Mark Stars wanted good, but he's down at least uh, one lap, I believe. Yeah, he had to lift most of the way around the racetrack on that flat lap there. I think it was a pretty quick pit stop, but that really caution when he got a lift around there. Now Sterling Marlin high, and that's going to change those positions a bit. Now Sterling Marlin high, and that's going to change those positions a bit. Bobby got the hole on the inside, and his brother Terry follows through, and so is Mark Martin. Sterling falls back to about sixth position. Bobby Labonte having a very good ride. He's had got off to a great start in 18 car this year. He had a second place finish at Rockingham and was running real strong at Daytona until he uh, got in an accident late in the race. And that big crash. How about it, Bobby Labonte? Tell tell us a little bit about this. Richmond track and how you how you react to this three-quarter mile racing facility in Richmond State Batters crew we've had, had to work a little harder this weekend it seems like uh, my uh, first lap of practice didn't know, go very good and uh, bent the left rear quarter pound on the left rear of the clip a little bit so we've had to straighten it out and didn't get no practice and got a little bit yesterday afternoon so we kind of got behind you know real early and, just, uh, you know, feel like we got a good race car. We just want to make sure we go out there and run every lap today. And run every lap they are at the present time, making a good show of it. And Mark Martin trying to make up some laps. Look at him come on. As good a race as that is, this is the great race. We're How still about this? For a moment, Wallace had him covered, got in front of him, Earnhardt snookered him, came right down to the bottom, ran wheel to wheel him off four. And they're back at it another lap. And again, Wallace pulls him. I tell you, people at home, this is not a replay. You know, they, they probably <laughs> walked off and got something for the refrigerator, and it's happening again. You know, we're sitting here watching it. Uh, we, we can tell you that it's not a replay. I think Dale will get behind him now and then, follow his tracks, cool things. A little bump right there. Cool things off a little bit, and then give him another run. Dick Bergren. Well, Jeff Gordon has pulled his car behind pit wall. He's not been on the racetrack since you saw him last. Jeff, what do you think is wrong with his car? Yeah, I really don't know what the problem is. I think seems to be running out of fuel. The more I uh, get the gas, the more the car, you know, wants to die on us. Uh, it's a shame, man. The car was running great. Uh, we didn't have the best car out there, not at the time. You know, we had some time to work on it, but uh, we could have had another really good finish, but this is going to ruin it for us. But we'll get back out there. We'll find out what the problem is. I really don't know right now. They're totally focused on the fuel system. They haven't touched anything electrical. It's all been fuel system so far. Thanks to the report, Dick. And remember now that he came out at lap 108 and the field is at 131. So they're showing Gordon his next to last. 42, Kyle Petty went out at 106. Still trying to get out here and score some points. We'll take a look at the former winners and where they're running here in a moment as we give you this service and take you back through the field. As they're putting a lap on Steve Kinzer, the world outlaw superstar. I'll tell you, that's got to be about like what Michael Jordan's going through, you know, trying to go from... Uh, basketball to baseball to go from world outlaw sprint cars to these Winston Cup cars. Uh, heck of a race car driver, but it's just a, a new learning process. It's just tough. Here are those past winners where they're running currently in this race. Wallace has the advantage. Pulls away for the moment by five, six car lengths. They have completed 135 laps, this time by Rusty Wallace's folks showing some optimism after all the frustration that goes well back into 1994. From the steel aerial platform here at Richmond International Raceway, the Pontiac Excitement 400. An overall view of this great racing facility that the Sawyer family has been building on for years and continues to add to. Now, take a look at this battle for the lead. 
Rusty Wallace for the moment stretching it out in car number two. And wow, look at that lead. He must have five car lengths. That's the most he's had <laughs> since the restart. Oh, that's getting dull out there. Only five car lengths? Holy smokes. <laughs> Take a look at this battle. Here is Mark Martin still trucking, still trying to get back. Lost those laps, came in, unscheduled stop. He can be a factor before this is over. At lap 142. He's right behind Terry Labonte, and Terry Labonte's um, had a, a great run. Uh, you know, he's um, been coming to the front all afternoon. But uh, I think Steve's got uh, Terry Scoochie with him. Yeah, Terry Dehart. Now, Terry Labonte won this race in September. He started 24th today. He's currently fourth. Gary seems like the longer you run, the better you get. Yeah, but right now we're a little bit loose. So we need to make another adjustment on the car, but it seems like the leaders are a little bit slower the longer they run than we are. So we hope we'll get better. They sure are working on it. Take a look at Terry Lavati here. Winner this past September. If you can stand the car just a little bit loose like that, sometimes that's a blessing because generally in the long, long runs with these tires, these cars have a tendency to tighten up. And if you can stand it a little loose and early going, sometimes you're really good later in the, in the day. He's in fourth. Garrett Cope having a marvelous ride. Stays up in third spot with car 12. Up, oh, Ricky Craven's car having some problems. Uh, going behind the wall, it uh, must be something pretty serious. More than just a flat tire must be possible engine trouble. And he was the point leader in the rookie uh, division right now, so uh, you know, that's gonna, gonna hurt them on that. Yeah, Ricky's gotten off to a good start for first year in Winston Cup, just three races into the season. Couple of 16ths, Daytona, yeah, Rockingham. Good, rock good, run, good qualifying effort, so he's impressed me. Dave Marcus down to the bottom being lapped by Rusty Wallace. Looks like he's found it here thus far in Houston. Dave, yeah, Dave, Marcus Dave, has two wins here. Yeah, Dave Marcus is one of the guys that, that has won a race here, and uh, he just went a lap down. And uh, you know, Dave's um, got got a great sponsor uh, in Olive Garden, and um, you know, I, I know that uh, that he'll be happy. We talked about him. He's in 19th right now, and uh, and just holding his own. Yeah, and you, when you talk about him, you go back to 76 and 82 here when he beat Richard Petty. In fact, he beat him both times and uh, had Bobby Allison in third back in, in 76. I still remember one of the races that Dave had won here. I don't remember what year it was, but actually one of the races I was watching from in from my TV set in California. That was on the old bull ring, the little half mile that yeah. uh, was so exciting. It's amazing. Some of the people that have never been to Richmond, um, we've got a good battle right now with uh, Terry Labonte and uh, Derek Cook. Just went right by him, and, and it looks like uh, Terry Wood. Cope got into him a little bit, but uh, you know, Terry's uh, definitely going to be one of the guys on the move. People, people that haven't been here to Richmond, but they've been here in the old track and can see this right now. It's amazing. It, there's not much room to put much more grandstands. Going to have, in the next two or three years, all the grandstands will be good. Don't tell the Sawyer brothers that. They're going to go higher. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. They, they want 100,000 here. Go they said they want to get to 100,000. Oh, we, we have a wreck. Uh, Todd Bodine has just backed into the fence uh, in turn three and four. Caution out. Third time. We'll have to wait for the replay. Hopefully we, we pick this up. But uh, I don't know if he had any help or just lost it. But he definitely got the back end of the car on the wall pretty good. It's flattened up. Looks like a gremlin. <laughs> Looks like a gremlin. <laughs> the factory stores of America, Todd Bodine. And, uh, you know, he's had a... a, a pretty hard season for some of the time last year and going into this year you know uh, he's had a lot of trouble yeah, he's had some accidents but uh, boy he's, he's been running good he's been fast if they could just figure out uh, how to get to those checkered flags it'll come Todd will figure it out he's also shown a lot of style he made a save down there at Daytona that put him right up there in the top of my list he sure did it was incredible especially in the bush clash here's Remember Randy that, one? that was wild well, Robin Pemberton and the crew wait for Rusty Wallace to enter his pits. You know, these guys were discussing originally a pitting on lap 185, but suddenly the chatter down here picked up the pace very quickly, and they were talking about coming in even possibly earlier. They thought Cash would take them that far. The right side tires are already on. Billy Weber comes around to the left front. Left side tires going on. I think that they were running just a little low on fuel. They probably had about 20, 25 laps left. Rusty Wallace down and away. Dick Berger, what's going on down pit road with Dale Earnhardt? 
This caution flag was perfectly timed for Earnhardt. Rushing went by him. Earnhardt really needed to pit. He had just radioed to his crew saying that he had his tires were going away. He has beaten Labonte out of pit road. Richard Childress was wandering around here moments before this pit stop. He has taken a very active role in deciding what is going to be done tire-wise to this automobile today. So the pit road is where the action is right now. Bumpers and jumpers down there, all pulling in, jumping over that wall with 65-pound tires and all that fuel to get them ready for more action in the Pontiac Excitement 400. Back at Richmond International Raceway, great to have you with us today on TBS. Let's show you the Auto Week Week in Racing. We'll begin with yesterday's Bush Grand National 250 lapper. It was the Hardy's Frisco 250. Cars came down to take the green. You see Terry Labonte there on the lead row. Rodney Combs had a good start yesterday, as did Tracy Leslie. Everyone worried about how this race would begin when Leslie's car started smoking early on there. Chad Little had won the first two Bush races of the year. These cars had very little practice. They were very loose. Little had problems early. Watch this. A full 360 off of turn four. Roof flaps come up. He stays straight keeps going and came back and had a chance to win the race. Perhaps the most amazing thing of all. Got down to the checkered flag, last lap of the race. Randy Porter in car number 48 there, spinning, whacking the wall hard. Phil Parsons also involved in it in the 99. Parsons lost a good finishing spot. Porter's car heavily damaged. Parsons in the 99 just barely got to the start finish line and completed the race yesterday. Finished 14th, one lap down. Here's the way they finished. Kenny Wallace was the winner over Terry Labonte, Johnny Benson, Mike McLaughlin, and Jason Keller. If you're an NHL HRA Drag Racing fans, sorry, this week's Winston Series event at Houston was rained out. Going to show you what's going on with Indy cars in Miami this weekend. The Grand Prix of Miami runs a little later this afternoon. Michael Andretti will have the pole over Guzman, Boisel, Gilda Ferrin in his first start, and Paul Tracy will start fifth. The Indy Lights qualifying order, Greg Moore and Jeff Ward will be the lead rope. Pedro Chavez and Robbie Buell back in the series this year, and Doug Boyer. Auto Week. Bruton Smith uh, announcing, too, that the Texas Motor Speedway Complex is going to be built. It's going to be built on Roth Crow's Alliance development near Fort Worth. It'll be a one-and-a-half-mile speedway with 160,000 seats. We're back to green. That's the Auto Week. We can race and get Auto Week at your newsstand. Thanks a lot, Rick Benjamin, as they came back. Wallace, Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, Derek Cope, the front four, Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett right back in it again. He's running in sixth, followed by Schrader, Marlin, Darrell Waltrip up to ninth, Ward Burton tenth, Bobby Hamilton, Dick Trickle twelfth, Bill Elliott thirteenth, John Andretti, and Rick Mass in fifteenth. Now to the front, and they started a lap or two backwards. Now at lap 159, and it's the same story that we saw earlier. As you get these great pictures out of Dick Trippis, car number 15. Let's watch him again as he's working on late speed. Yeah. He's bearing down. Got a glance at the rear? He's looking at us. <laughs> I don't think so. He's looking over his shoulder. The yeah, eyes moving all over the place in there, checking everything out. You saw an eye on Bill Elliott right behind him. And Jeff Burton made a little move on him there. He's coming up on the outside. All of this is back there in 12, 13, 14 position. Do I go inside or outside? Is David Jeff going to get the job done up there, or do I need to take the outside lane with Jeff Burton? 16 cars on the lead lap at lap 162, and only one official retiree from the event. That at lap 151, Ricky Craven. And they have Bodine officially out, too. Todd Bodine now. That's not official at the moment. Ooh! Bill Elliott came off the corner and got the some tire marks on the 94. He's still moving along. He and Jeremy Mayfield flying together out of four. Take a look at this one. Here is that 28 car, and what a run Dale Jarrett has made. Remember, he had trouble earlier and spun back on the 85th lap. He's pulled himself right back into this race, into fifth. He gets along with 18, and he makes that shot through. He must have that car uh, working to his liking. He was on the tail end of the lead lap not long ago, like you said, when he spun out. But he's uh, gathering it all back together now and finding himself in pretty good track position. I think the first five cars after that caution period came out of the pits just as they went in. But now they're starting to mix up as Jarrett's working his way up there. 
think the next one he's going to be looking at will be Derek Cope for the fourth position. Well, there you see Dale Jarrett in the uh, car number 28. And after the first two races of the year, what are your observations, Dale Jarrett? We expected to win the races, or at least one of them, but uh, we're missing a little bit on the handling part uh, as far as me getting comfortable in the car and being able to relay to the guys. Uh, I'm not happy with my performance yet. We come out of it with two top fives, so I feel good about that part, that we accumulated a lot of points. So uh, we're still in that battle, and I think we've got a lot more for them. I tell you, it's a long season, so, um, you know, they, they started off uh, with, a, with a great start and uh, two top fives and, uh, you know, just uh, hope they'll get better. I know how you do not like to talk about the 28. It makes you a little, you know, you, you want to talk about other cars and the car that you're, you're involved with, but he, Dale made an interesting point. He had trouble getting used to this thing. He said that feel felt twitchy to him still, and then he didn't feel he had a solid handle on that car, and yet today... That thing is, is running on a rail. I tell you, this is a, it's an identical car from uh, what we ran here. And, uh, you know, here we got uh, Bobby Hamilton and, and Ward Burton. Would be yeah. Battling for 10th position. Ward looks like he's going to take a look a look under Bobby. Yeah, it looks like Ward's going to get that 10th position. Well, Ward's an aggressive little race driver. I've, I've run a lot with him in the Bush Series. Put a lot of tire marks on him and vice versa. <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll drive as hard as it'll go. You can just feel sure of that. He hasn't had a very good run in, in very few of the races. So, uh, you know, now we're seeing it again. Ward's a, Ward's a good race car driver. And, uh, it's kind of hot, uh, hot, hot and cold. You know, it seems like he either really has a strong run or, or it's awful. It's just not much in between for Ward. Todd Bodine is becoming the second official retiree from the event. He and Craig will be the first two out. 11th spot is that 43 car ward, and there is Daryl Waltrip, who's had a miserable start, and he's looking very good right now in this 17 car. Yeah, actually, Daryl had a good run going at Daytona, but yep. he had transmission failures, but boy, he had an awful week last week at Rocky. Yeah. Up to ninth. That's a good run today for Daryl. Daryl likes Richmond, though. He usually runs pretty good here. Steve, Steve's got Todd Bodine in the pits. Rusty Wallace's rear end happened to burn up just before practice was over, and that could have just as well happened today in the race. Had, he, had, had it rained the last 10 minutes of practice or something like that, they wouldn't have caught that. But, you know, it's just the right place, wrong place at the right time, at the wrong time. It's just part of the deal. Take a look at this little struggle. There's Sterling Marlin down. Crater is in there. Mike Wallace is back there in seventh and eighth. Mike was running decent, but he did make one of those early uh, green flag pit stops. And he's the last round, but he looks like he's uh, able to race pretty good with Sterling and Schrader. Yeah, he's back in 29th spot. But the 7th place car is the 25 of Schrader, and the 8th place car is the 4 of Sterling Marlin. And then you see Darrell Walter. Hanging right in as we get toward 200 laps complete in this one. Present time, 175 will be complete this time by. Moving in toward the halfway mark in the exciting Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond. You're riding with uh, Randy LaJoy in the MBNA bank cards car. He is uh, currently being shown in 30th position. Running a few laps down, uh, three, maybe four now, four laps down to think, those leaders. I think that little hose uh, kind of getting in our camera view there. I think that's what what's hooks to his drink bottle to where he sucks out of that for uh, fresh cold water during this race as you dry out. Today I've been looking through the, the pits and I, I still think they're still working on Jeff Gordon's car. Man, that's, that's a shame. Had one change of position. Ward Burton is again pulled up. He's gone tonight. He's pushed uh, Dale Earnhardt back into 10th position. 
as you watch Randy LaJoy, another of those rookie candidates this year, he in the Bill Davis car. 184 complete on the track, and there you see the three leaders. Wallace, who has dominated this event, he's led all but six laps, staying up there. Two and again, he has one of those huge five-car length leads yeah. again. <laughs> As Terry Labonte is trying to get up in the middle of this one now. Taking okay. over where Jeff Gordon left off, I guess, in the other Hendrick Cup. Get a little more on Jeff Gordon. Let's go to Rick Benjamin. Uh, Ken, we're told that what they're trying to do now in the 24 pit, or actually in the garage area, is change the fuel cell. Dick Bergman told us how it was a fuel problem that uh, caused the engine to quit in the 24 car many laps ago. They tried the fuel filter, they tried the pump, now they're changing the fuel cell. As we look back up the racetrack a little bit and take a look at some of the other cars, Rusty Wallace, steer, still your leader, Terry Labonte now tracking down Dale Earnhardt as a battle for second takes shape. 31 minutes so far on the uh, 24 car. Take a look at Labonte coming after that three. Talk about chases. We've got him here today. Rusty Wallace stays in front. He's had second in this race the last two years. He's putting his foot down today. And so is number 12, Derek Cope. What a story here as the 28 car, Dale Jarrett, comes after him. Battle for third. Let's get a story uh, on this 12 car, Derek Cope, the Allison car. Jimmy Fenning standing by on pit road. Well, Jimmy Fenning, it looks like an awfully good day. Have you still got more in that thing or what? Yeah, Derek's doing a good job today. Yeah, last set we were a little bit loose. Now we're a little bit tight, but uh, we got a long ways to go. We'll just keep tweaking on the car and see what we can get out of it. How about the tire wear today? Is it going according to plan? The tire wear today, is it going according to plan? Well, it, the tire wear is pretty bad, but, you know, we run about 80 laps and the car starts going away, but it ain't bad. Goodyear's got a good tire. And that seems to be happening to almost everybody. Randy Pemberton. Well, Dale Jarrett certainly having a great run here on the short track with his new team. Um, uh, when these guys pitted, the, or they spun early on, they were as far back as 20th, came back, and now they were challenging for the fourth position. What they did in the last pit stop was lower a little air pressure, and this team was high five it, but I got a feeling the car is starting to back up just a tad right now, so they'll keep, they'll keep working on the 28. It's hard to see, Randy, because he's right here giving Derek Cope all he wants at the present time. In that top three, as they stand on the track, Rusty Wallace has won four times here, Earnhardt five, Terry Labonte has won once at Richmond back in the fall. All previous winners. The only one missing from that group is Ernie Urban, the guy that won a year ago in this event. That was the day Kim wasn't going to come. Everybody was on you and kidding you about the fact you couldn't win here, right? Yeah, everybody figured I couldn't drive at Richmond, but um, Larry, Larry McReynolds <laughs> you showed him. Uh, proved that, you know, that uh, gave me a great race car, and, um, you know, we, we came uh, uh, away with a victory. Here's the four car. How important is Larry McReynolds? I tell you, um, I, I think he's, he's one of the best crew chiefs on, on pit road. And, um, Why? You know, what makes him so good? Because he's so thorough. You know, um, I, I was just telling you today, um, him going through uh, tech inspection, he was one of the last cars through. That car was basically done last night. I mean, basically, uh, everything was checked and stuff, but they kept going over everything and over everything. He goes over everything with a fine tooth comb, but uh, that's one of the things, you know, um, uh, why Larry is so good. Ward Burton trying to move up on Sterling Marlin for the eighth position, but you know the millions of race fans out there think all these race cars are exactly the same. And granted, most teams may have the same pieces and parts to start with, but those team players have a whole lot to do with the success of the race team. I mean, it takes a good driver, it takes a good crew chief too to put all the package together. Good engines. It just takes the whole ball of wax to get out here and win these races. And there's one that certainly had it at Daytona with Brent Pittman's engine carrying him to victory down there today. How are you going to win today, Sterling? Well, I tell you, you're going to have to run hard all day. You can't you can't let up for a second here because uh, they'll get away from you. Car's got to handle real good, and uh, we're going to go after them. We need to come out here to lead the points and do the best we can do, and today's my little girl's birthday, so we're going to win. <laughs> all right. Well, that's something to win for. <laughs> Sterling Marlin. You know, they had a they had a good run uh, going at Rockham. They, they got in some trouble. And also last year here, you know, Sterling uh, had a really good run. He basically got a lap down. And um, 
Now the 28 car, we'll look at uh, Dale Jarrett chasing down again to uh, uh, Todd or um, Derek. Derek Coke. And, um, you know, that, that battle's just like Rusty and, and the, the battle up front. Yeah, it looks like uh, Jarrett will get up there and really put the heat on, and then he'll spin the tire a little bit, fall back, Whoops. and he'll come up and make another run. See, like uh, I was telling the, the fans that uh, the car has to handle through the middle of the corner. Um, you can see Derek right now not getting through the middle of the corner, but right now, Del Jarrett was. And now we've got uh, Daryl Waltrip and... Um, and Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton. Richard Petty. Pontiac. Yeah. As bad as it can. And look at Mark Martin right there giving us these pictures. I'll tell you, I think one of the gutsiest runs we've seen in a long time was Mark Martin still trying to take cars back, trying to take some laps back. Remember he had that throttle stick on the floor. He put his foot down, put his right foot down. He had to use his left foot to lift the throttle up. Did it lap after lap. Never missed a beat. He's uh, some kind of special racer, this guy in number six. He's braver than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be coming in fifth getting to work on that. Uh -huh. He stayed out there and he found a caution, came in, changed the hind joint, got him back out. Give him all the accolades. Halfway. We are at halfway in the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond. The Pontiac Excitement 400 is brought to you by MasterCard. It's more than a credit card. It's smart money. And by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Auto Week, America's only enthusiast weekly. Visit your local newsstand and get Auto Week every week. And by Liquid Wrench with Teflon, a non-flammable spray lubricant with thousands of uses around your home, shop, and car. And by STP, makers of fuel performance additives like STP Super Concentrated Fuel Injector Cleaner and STP Gas Treatment. So no matter where you drive, go with STP and drive a better car. Averaging 107 miles per hour through halfway in this Pontiac Excitement 400 here on TBS from Richmond International Raceway. The leader is Rusty Wallace. Winner here before, last two years, the runner-up in the event. Right now, the dominator of this event. Standing in second is Terry Lavati with Dale Earnhardt back in third. There you see Lavati in the five as you take a look at lap leaders thus far in the race, and it's been dominated by Wallace. We are now showing 208 on the board. 208 on the board and 202, now 203. 202. All go to Wallace. Funny because side by side so many times back to the line you think Earnhardt would have had him, but he always made sure he nipped just in front of him as he tries to get those five bonus points from leading the most laps. Wasn't going to give anything to Earnhardt. I don't think uh, Rusty's got any problem about leaving the most laps for the day. And, and that's what it actually, you, you get a five bonus points for leading the lap, and you get five more bonus points for uh, leading the most laps. And uh, those points all uh, work out into a lot in the end of the year. And Rusty has a lot to make up for after the first two events. He's got off to a, a poor start for Rusty. Yeah, 34th at Daytona, that wreck, and then the overheating problem. He's talked about that a lot. That's one of those things Ernie is talking about that goes back a year. They, they, didn't they have some problems there, too, with overheating? They, they had some overheating problems, and, you know, I, I'm not real familiar with all the problems they had, but, uh, you know, five or six times last year they had problems, and, uh, you know, whether it was a, a broken motor or, or something, and um, now, again, this year, it started off in first two races. You know, we had a wreck at Daytona and uh, the overheating problem. Somebody said that it was uh, two hot dog wrappers at, at Rockingham. Um, you know, I, I haven't actually uh, heard that from Rusty. But I, I thought was. they were looking for something more. I had heard they were looking for something more in the engine department. Yeah, Rusty was right. talking head gaskets. I don't, I'm not sure if, you know, if it's, if it's debris on the grill causing the head gaskets or if it's an internal problem. Yeah. Well, there's Rusty. And we've yep. gone halfway in the race, and you can see his lead. Still, what, less than a second. Coming up to lap one of the rookie contenders, Robert Preston. What a fine racer he's going to be. I tell you, I was, Cup. I was talking about Rusty uh, uh, just a little while ago. And he's one of the guys that he'll hot lap five or six laps and pull in. And me and Mark Martin were one of the guys that would, would practice a good 20 or 30 lap run, a 40 lap run to figure out what our car is doing and we adjust on it. 
Western's one of the guys that just seems to, to go five or six laps, pulls in, walks on it a little bit, goes five or six more. Never seems to, to run very much in, in practice. I was sitting there clocking cars a lot uh, yesterday, and uh, you know, he was one of the guys that did that. Yeah, he's one of the only ones that can pull that off and get away with it, because it seems you have to run more to know what you have. There you got John Andretti uh, running uh, uh, Carl Hoskins and uh, Michael Francis's car, and um, Kmart. Uh, they're, they're having a good run today, and uh, you know, I, I'm not real sure what position they're in, but... Uh, well, they're, they're, they're back in 13th, Ernie, and, you know, he's coming on. He had a disastrous Daytona, and uh, now they, 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 they look like they're turning things around out here. Ricky Rudd looks like he's much faster, but Ricky just made a green flag pit stop for another set of tires, so that's the situation there. John's actually still on the lead lap and running quite well for a first-year race team. Yeah, he's after Trickle if he can find him up there in the 15. He's not too far in front of him. He can see him. Yep. The Trickle's going to be a hard one to get by, too. 27th is uh, John Andretti down at Daytona, but came back at Rockingham up to 13th. That's typical of Tim Brewer and Cranipus. And look at this. Here comes Terry Labonte down to the inside. we got to remember, Terry Labonte won this race uh, last year. I was still in the hospital, and me and Larry talked about it some... Uh, you know, they kept calling me, calling me before the race started. And, uh, I don't really remember it, but they were they were telling me that I kept asking, well, who's running good? And uh, Terry Bonney was one of the guys, and I remember watching that race some, and Terry was just awesome that night. And here comes Jarrett just to make it a three, uh, rather Earnhardt, Earnhardt, Earnhardt just to make it a threesome. I remember that. I was right up here on the TV yeah. in Inspire last September. He had a yeah. great time. One of my debuts in the TV world. Well, it's great to have Ernie Irvin with us, but of course it'll be great if we can see him out here running one of these things real soon. But it's not going to be long. You know, um, me and Robert were talking a lot yesterday, and uh, I'm, I'm planning on doing some testing in the in the next month. And, uh, you know, just every time we take our Winston Cup car, I'll get in it and, uh, you know, do some more hot laps. And just got to get my my uh, abilities going. Terry, and, going this ought to get your track. adrenaline up right there, Ernie. Take a look at Terry Lovani on the outside, working out of two. And here comes Earnhardt with him. That's the first time, we've seen, he got that first time we've seen anybody force Rusty to hold it down on the bottom. Rusty couldn't do it either. Rusty likes that second groove if, if he's going to be side to side. But Terry stuck it up there and took the outside away from from Rusty and completing the pass. As Earnhardt's trying to get up there in the middle just laying there having all the fun, and I'm just back here in third. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll wait. All the big points are at the end of the race. That's where the money is. That's, That's the 10th right. lead change out here today, folks. Pontiac Excitement, 400 live, and take a look at this one. Here's Waltrip down on the inside. Here's Ricky Rudd. He's a few laps down trying to get in. And With the new tires, Bill Elliott yep. made a pit stop for new tires as well. They're going with the 17 and the 18. Darrell Waltrip and Bobby Labonte, they're on the lead lap. They're Tenths and 11. Position. Tenths and 11. Looks like uh, this is going to be one of the times that we may get some green flag stocks, and uh, this is going to be a uh, uh, Coming up soon. Yeah. I, I think so. Another look at the leaders. Top three. Just about bumper to bumper. As they work lap 223 of 400 to be run today, Robert Yates looks on the rest of the crowd, all watching this great battle. Welcome back to the SDP Pit Communication Center here at Richmond International Raceway. Rick Benjamin with you on TBS Sports today. Great battle up front. Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, Dale Earnhardt, they've been going at it for the past hundred or so laps, and we'll have more of that battle in a moment. We want to tell you about the upcoming events you're going to see here on TBS Sports in the 1995 Winston Cup campaign. We'll show you that in just a moment. We'll be going to Charlotte, of course, uh, at the end of May. We'll be going to Pocono in July, back here in Richmond uh, in the fall on September 9th, May 28th, the date of the Coca-Cola 600. We'll have the uh, Bush Grand National Race on Saturday. Miller Genuine Draft 500, July 16th, Sunday afternoon at Pocono. September 9th, the Saturday night show back here in Richmond, the Miller Genuine Draft 400. We'll wrap up our season with the UA WGM Quality 500. That'll be October the 8th, Sunday afternoon, again at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Full season of Winston Cup racing for you right here on TBS Sports. And in Richmond, we have a full calendar of events also uh, in May, coming up in a couple of months, the 4th through the 6th, the Electric Vehicle Grand Prix. Now, these are formula cars, open-wheel cars, powered by electric motors. They've run a few races. They ran at Cleveland and Phoenix last year. They're coming here to Richmond. June 17th, this is one Dick Berger and I, we've agreed we're going to pay to come and see the USAC Silver Crown cars of the Formula 4 2000s. They've had a couple of Silver Crown cars here on display all weekend. It's been quite a sight. September 7th, the NASCAR Super Trucks come back uh, for their shootout event, and on September 8th, the Bush Grand National Car, the Autolite Platinum 250. Ken Squires? 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing those Silver Crown cars down here. It'll be fantastic on this three-quarter mile track. Well, here you see Earnhardt, number three, looking up as the number five, Labonte, continues to lead, and Wallace has dropped to second. Look at this battle. It's like Bobby Labonte's fading a little bit. I'm yep. not sure if he's just having a handling problem or what, but uh, he can't fade too far. He'll get lapped here pretty soon. And he, we're, we're cutting down the numbers. We're down to 13 cars in the lead lap, and that 18 is on the tail end of that lead lap. And there's the 24 car, 45 minutes in the pits, 117 laps down. Jeff Gordon's back out there again. It's a little hard to tell exactly what went wrong because they changed so many things on that car. They looked at the fuel cell, they changed the fuel pump, they bypassed the fuel filter, they changed the carburetor. Everything in the fuel system was changed, but they think it was the fuel pump, and it took a long time to change it. It's the sort of thing you expect to go wrong on the highway, not on the racetrack. Ah, got a little sparring out here. Yeah, it got a little bit tight there. Then the, and, uh... Labonte is going to have to hurry, though. His brother, Terry, is coming up to put him a lap down. He doesn't need that to happen. Green flag. Pit stop should be coming up right off. Elliott had pitted, following a couple of laps off the pace. We see Earnhardt still in Terry Labonte's rear view mirror range, but uh, Rusty has faded just a little bit in third position. So far, we've seen Rusty behind all day. Rusty's pitting right now, so uh, we're going to start having some good flat stops. This may force the leaders to come in as well. Rusty pulls this off. He's going to run so much faster when he goes back out. Lap 236. Wallace on the pit road. Here's Randy Pemberton. Well, the deal is Rusty has picked up a little bit of a push. It's finally come where the track is just getting a little bit greasy. Now he has pushed the car, so what's going to happen here? They're going to adjust the air pressure in the right rear for Rusty. Tires already on on the right side of the car. Scott Robinson with a jack. Left side tires come now. Scott is ready to drop the jack. Rusty down the way. 18 6. Good stop. Bobby Labonte on pit road. He spun this car on that first day of practice, banged it on the wall, and now they're going all the way around. Four tire change on Bobby Labonte, and he really gave a shake on the steering wheel as he came in as if he might be a little thin on fuel. You see Musgrave in front of him. Here he is back out again in 19.5. 19.5. And here's Mark Martin on pit road. Still working to get back into this race. Mark Martin showing an 18th and being shown one lap down to the leaders. Randy? Right side tires already on. Steve Neal goes to work on the left front. Around the wedge for Mark. He's down in the way. Good pit stop for the boundary through as well. That's at lap 238. Shepard is on pit road, as is Kyle Petty and Jeremy Mayfield. Coming. Now you got Dale Earnhardt just coming on pit road, and uh, you know that's the slowest thing you got to do is go on pit road. That must be hard coming down to that speed limit. It really is. Your spotter usually reminds you just to help you out. The Earnhardt pits. I know we got Andy Peterson changing front tires there. Don't see any chassis changes. So maybe some air pressure. Yeah, I can't see that. Labonte is in as well. There's our race leader. Lap 241. And there's the problem they keep saying they're having with the tires going across pit road. Earnhardt had a 19.2. It'll be interesting to see with Rusty being the first one. Already on his new tires, which are uh, usually a pretty strong pace. He may end up with the lead when this all shakes out. Dale Jarrett falling back to six. He's away with the signal out. He's gone. Big change of positions under green. Wall trip in and out. Bobby Hamilton, who's set outside of the front row. And here is Derek Cope. And the Allison car, number 12, Dick Bergren, waiting for him in his pit. Right behind him is coming Sterling Marlin. Nemechek is back in. And Ward Burton has lost a wheel off his car. They didn't get the lug nuts on. It's fallen off. You see the tire there? Right rear's missing. That's a bad deal. He's out of his box. Uh, they'd have to pick the car up and try to get the jack under it. They just can't get the jack under it. sit right in the rim. Randy? No chassis adjustments for Sterling. He likes it the way it is. They do work on the air pressure just a little bit. Left side Ooh. tires on. Air comes in. Well, Cope is already gone as well. He had a good quick pit 
stopped out here. What out just about the same time. Ward Burton still working the back end of that one. That was costly. Ward was on the lead lap in the top ten too when this uh, all happened here. Oh, that's, all that's too bad. Up. Looks like they put a flat right rear on it. It looks wow. Yeah. They still put flat. a flat right rear on that car. Now he's gonna have to come right back in. Oh, wow. that's just too bad. This what is all bad. that about? Oh man. Look, he may spin out right here. Yeah, bent and busted up. Oh, and he can't hold it. Look at that thing. Andretti is now the leader at number 37. I'll tell you, this is a, a good run for John Andretti, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great deal. They, those guys have only been walking together for a few races, and, uh, you know, John Andretti's doing a great job. Now they've been stretching their pit stop, so... Uh, it's going to actually put them behind. If a caution comes out now, that's going to be a good, a good move. But, but uh, I think they'll be coming in the next couple laps. Uh, Here's um, uh, Ward Burton right Ward back Burton. in. The, well, they must have just in the heat, in the panic and the excitement of trying to get the car up, just grabbed the wrong tire. That tire still had a sticker on it. I, I was Did seeing it, really? it going out of the pits. It still had a sticker on it. Uh, I don't know why. It's maybe maybe a piece of the fender or something cut it down. Well, his first Winston Cup start was here just one year ago. Second time at Richmond. And boy, yep, there's a sticker right there. Oh. Yep. Huh. I'm wondering if it was cut off some of that metal around maybe, that fender. Maybe they dropped the jack and there was a sharp edge of sheet metal. Caught it. Sheared it. It must have been what happened. But it happened just as he started back out. Yeah. It looked like it was flat when it went down. Yeah, they, they uh, dropped the jack. It must have just uh, punctured it. So there's John Andretti, who stays out there, has not pitted yet, and for the moment has the lead. This is at lap 248 in the event. It is John Andretti in first place, and Terry Labonte is in second. Steel aerial platform. Giving you a gander at the three-quarter mile Richmond International Raceway. They keep adding seats at every event, and they're still sold out. And for good reason. You don't find much better racing than you'll find here in the heart of Virginia, the heart of the Confederacy. Richmond. You see Bobby Hamilton, who was starting outside of the front row, and you see right behind him that number five car, who is now the leader as John Andretti has pitted. And he came in inheriting that first spot once again for number five. Bobby Hamilton's run strong all day. He's in the 11th position of the lap. He does not want to go down the lap right now. Well, he sure needs a caution than that Pontiac hanging on just in front. He needs a quick. Hendrick Chevrolet. Terry has really got her dialed in now. The sun's come out a little bit stronger here lately. It looks like it's helping Terry's car and maybe hurting uh, Daniel Rusty just a little bit. What's the sun do to you out here, fellas? You know, it, just every car it seems to react too different. Sometimes if you're a little tight, it just seems to make it push more. If you're a little loose, it just seems to make it be looser. And, uh, you know, the, the sun, it's still so chilly because uh, I don't think it's going to matter much because, uh, you know, we're only talking about 10 degrees of sun, you know, and, and it's only still 40, 50 degrees. Great show. Wayne Sawyer, one of the Sawyer boys up here. You sure you know how to draw a crowd, don't you? Not, oh, he says he's not sold out for September. Ah, oh, they got a few left, one or two, but you better hurry. Uh, they haven't even started putting them on. April 29th, they're going to start putting out the uh, tickets, the, that new section they built. What, 8,000 seats? They haven't gone on sale. Everything that's here is gone, but there's some new seats being built right now, so you want to be ready on April the 29th because they'll go in about a minute and a half. All right, take a look here at uh, Schrader in the oh. Let him come up in here in car number 25, Ken Schrader. Having a great run. Now, we haven't said much about that Budweiser car, which now finds itself in fourth spot up among those leaders. And one of those Hendrick cars having a great day. Yeah, Kenny's, uh, you know, he's a steady competitor. He had a strong run in the points last season. He's been on a little bit of a dry spell since the win. But uh, that's just coincidence. He's run good enough many times. It should have happened uh, recently. It just coincidentally hasn't. He's a strong runner. I'll there tell you, is. you got to realize that Rick Hendricks has got a lot of motors in this race, too, because uh, Kenny Schrader, uh, Jeff Gordon, the 18 car has got a Hendricks motor, um, and then plus the car that's leading, Terry Labonte. Yeah, 
Steve Griffin team uh, uses their That's engine right. as well. The yeah. 29 car, and he's had some good runs this year. That was a real surprise at Grissom. If you're just joining us, not in the show. Did not make the cut. Dale Jarrett still working at it, uh, keeping it up there in the thick of things. In the top five again. Fifth, Fifth place. position going around Joe Nemechek. As far as I know, Brett Bodine is still in that 11 car, flew and all. I don't think he's gotten out yet. He's still doing really anything. Yeah, you, you know, it, when you get the, <laughs> the race going, it doesn't matter yeah. how, how bad you're feeling. That's you just right. keep in that car. Broken bones and all. It just doesn't seem to matter whether you're sick or hurting or whatever. Take a look at Derek Cope running back here in the uh, sixth position. There he is, number 12. And the main Intel Ford, is that what it is? Yeah. Mm. Yep. Bobby says that stuff works, too. <laughs> Lap on Dave Marcus. I noticed Bobby's mane was starting to look. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you see Eric Coat. Uh, uh, Sterling Marlin. And, uh, and right Coat behind him is Mark Martin. Mark still Martin trying to get there. There. Yeah, he scrambled back to 14th place. Still a lap down. He's running good. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mark uh, had that valve spin. I, I don't know what the valve spin problem was, but uh, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't heard of anybody having valve spin problems, but we've had two today. And early on in the race, they happened back to back within a matter of just a few laps. A little further back, eighth and ninth place there, you see the body in the 18. And there's Waltrip right with him. 17 and 18, 18 and 17, fighting for the eighth position. Bobby Labonte has it for the moment. An old DW. And those guys aren't far from going a lap down. Uh, you know, Terry Labonte right. is only a matter of uh, a few in seconds, um, and they can see him in his mirror, and it is, uh, it's amazing because uh, Terry's got a good pace going. What's that George Jones song, Don't Throw Me on the Junk Heap Yet? <laughs> and that's what Daryl's singing right now in that car 17 as he comes after 30-year-old Bobby Labonte. All right, Daryl, got a youngster out in front of you who's looking good. How about it, D.W.? Tell us about these young kids. There's some talented young guys out here right now, and, uh, you know, you, the Burton brothers and, of course, Jeff Gordon and uh, Bobby Labonte, uh, it's the future of the sport, and uh, I think every week they get better, and that's all they really need is more and more experience, figuring out these 500-mile races, 500-lap uh, races, wherever they may be. Uh, I think once they get... Uh, the patience down pat and, and uh, how to run these long races, then uh, they're going to win a lot of them. <laughs> Daryl needs to get some new sunglasses because yeah. it looks like two spoons <laughs> hooked up to each other. Right? I mean, what the heck? Come on, Daryl. <laughs> Granny glasses. He, <laughs> everybody's got free sunglasses, and I know Daryl could get them. He must have paid for those. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to pay dearly when you get done with them. <laughs> oh, bad oh, one. we've had a rest. Oh. 28's in it. Dale Jarrett and 26. Is it Kinzer? Yeah. That is Steve Kinzer. Sorry, that's a 33. Oh, okay. 33. Robert Preston. Yeah. And look, I, I don't really want to comment on before it's happened, but it looked like uh, the 33 car must have broke a motor or something. Caution out. This would be... This is a pretty... Lap 270, folks. Pretty serious wreck there. It looks like a 33 car's uh, got some serious damage. Fourth yeah. caution. Dale Jarrett's trying to drive his back, but uh, he's got some pretty a lot serious of damage, damage, too. A lot of damage. And Robert Presley came up out of those Grand National ranks, grew up in a great racing family. We can see him move. He's climbing out now. He's I may have commented up. early on that. I, it doesn't really look like he's broke a motor. I don't really know what happened. Hopefully we'll have it on, on camera. There's Dale Jarrett, number 28, headed back in six. Had spun early in the day and got right back into this thing. Leaders pitting. Wallace, Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, Schrader, all on pit road. Let's go to uh, Steve standing by, Steve Burns, and Terry Labonte's pit. It's Terry Labonte's pit, car number They've made no adjustments on the last pit stop and will not do so again. Let's go to Nick Bergman in Earnhardt's pits. 
Well, then Kenny Schrader has been, he was fourth when he came in here. His best finish ever in Richmond was eighth position, so he's having the best day of his entire career here. The amount of time, however, between he and the other front-running cars, particularly Earnhardt, is very, very small, and Rusty has beaten him out. Slow pit stop for Schrader. 25.99 for Schrader. Up to Rick. Well, you, you talk about fate. Dale Jarrett ran over some debris, and that's what happened. Blew the right front. They've got some heavy damage on the right side. Larry McReynolds talking on the radio to his crew, trying to get the toe set, to say the least. Uh, they got some cutters going out now. So uh, heavy damage for Dale Jarrett. Went down a lap. He's going to go down another one here, guys, on pit road if they don't get this out in a hurry. It don't look like they're going to get it out. Uh, it's not going to be a quick one. You know, they, they may have to change the tie yeah, rod. Take more than toe in. That thing's been pretty good. Larry's already actually got one uh, made up. Uh, Kenny Schrader uh, had a bad stop, but uh, he sure is running good. Let's go to Rick Benjamin. As we watch Ken Schrader work his way around this oval in the Budweiser car, Schrader on his way hopefully to his best finish ever here at Richmond International Raceway. Schrader under caution, as is the remainder of the field here this afternoon and uh, Ken Squire I think Schrader could be in line to be a contender before this one's over. Indeed he can be he's right up here in the top four and while we're talking about the uh, Budweiser car out here let's talk about the Bud who won a regular feature in our TBS telecast of Winston Cup racing. Hey race fans Budweiser asks who won March 8, 1992, Richmond International Raceway. Bill Elliott and the Budweiser 4, the 11, and the 28 of Davey Allison starting on the front row. They flexed plenty of early muscle. But soon, their rearview mirrors were filled with green and orange. Alan Kowicki in the number 7, and Harry Gann in car number 33 battling their way to the front of the field. But who won? Here's the list of contenders. The winner when we come back. If you pick Bill Elliott, you're right. Here's how the events transpired. The 28 of Davey Allison and the 33 of Harry Gant battled furiously in the early going, but they both faded late in the race. In the end, a dramatic two-car battle between the Budweiser Ford of Bill Elliott and the number seven of Alan Kowicki. Elliott and Kowicki dusted door handles over the last few laps. But in the end, Elliott prevailed by an official margin of 18 inches. Who won? Brought to you by Budweiser. For that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a Bud. Back with you again with uh, Rusty Wallace being shown as the leader out here with lap, what, 276 now recorded. In the second spot would be Earnhardt, Levante would be third, and Ken Schrader would stay up there in the fourth position. So, we're under a caution once again here at Richmond. Hard hit. Let's hope that Robert Presley's okay. We're going to get more for you on that story. Here's a Dale Earnhardt, car number three, a serious contender to win this one. Earlier in the week and in the past several days, there's been a story out about how NASCAR may have been showing some favoritism that's been giving a call to various drivers out here. And Dale Earnhardt was asked about this, and he gave us these comments. Thought you might want to share them with us. I think there's mistakes made in racing on every level and whether it be a competitor or a NASCAR everybody makes mistakes but as far as saying you know you can go by 400 pounds lighter or, or light this race or you can run a big engine I don't think that happens. And we're back with you here at Richmond and you, you heard from Dale Earnhardt and I, I'd like to ask the both of you uh, Ernie Irvin with us today and Chuck Bound. Uh, your, your feelings about that, that there are times when they might try to favor one team over another. Chuck, you, you've been at this for a while. In fact, you were one of the ones they said this about uh, a year ago. Well, you know, this, this business seems to thrive on rumors. And <laughs> last year, driving for Bobby Allison in the Winston Cup Series, we didn't have a sponsor. And each week, we seemed to be qualifying pretty good and won a pole and we're having some pretty good runs. And rumor was going around that, well, NASCAR is letting them use big motors so they can qualify well and, and do this stuff to attract a sponsor. Well, I've never gotten one of those calls in my life, and I don't think it goes on in this business at all. It's far too competitive. There's too many people watching you too closely. But they said that about you. Yeah, the rumor the, the rumor went around, but the truth is... They're trying to help pole, Allison. Yeah, when you, and when you win a poll, your engine's torn down, it's checked out, and if you're wrong, you're out. It's, that's what I think. Heck, I tell you, you know, the 9 to ones right now that people are running in the bush uh, with an open carburetor, makes about 40 less horsepower 
but at Richmond, I don't think you could tell much difference. And uh, me and Chuck are in some uh, odd seats. We're, we're, <laughs> we're normally uh, out here at the racetrack, you know, sitting Start in, a, rumors. in another seat, <laughs> starting rumors, you know. And uh, I, I really think that, uh, that I, I'm glad to be here, but we're getting ready to go green, and this is going to be exciting. I'll tell you, I, I think Gary Nelson has really turned the screws down so much that a lot of folks are looking for any reason. And if you ever gave Junior Johnson half a chance, he'd own the whole deal. <laughs> uh-uh. I have trouble with that one. We'll see. We're back on the green, folks. It's uh, lap 280 as they take green. It's like Rusty Wiggle, pretty good, getting into the first turn down there, and Ted Musgrave. <laughs> Yeah, Teddy's uh, got a great car today, just um, got behind. And, you know, I'm sure he's going to hold on to everything he can right now and, uh, and try to hold that and hopefully get a caution. That'll put 10 cars back in the lead lap. We had nine as we went to resumption of the race. Well, we'll look at this. <laughs> the ride is just Look at Mike Wallace. He's looking pretty good right in front of him. Mark Martin seems to take a little bit of time getting up to speed. I tell you, that's that's the thing, because the tires are so cold, the weather's so cold, the tires got to be hard to be able to do it, and it takes some time to get the heat in them. You see all the rubber on the windshield already. That's just coming off the other cars in front of it as the day goes on. But, uh, oh, look at that three-wide bang. And, uh, wow, Jimmy's Mark Martin's car. There's Jimmy Spencer. But look at that windshield. It's starting to get a lot of rubber in it, and that's, that's a normal thing for him. Look at Boy, look at it. Oh, oh man. wow. Let's go to Steve Burns. He has Robert Presley with him. Can you, ask, can you ask about Robert's condition? Robert, you're okay? Yeah, we're doing fine. You know, they just made us come over here and let him check us for a second. So, you know, just one of them deals. I think Dale blew the tire, and we just happened to be on the outside and both got in the wall. Okay, thank you, Robert. That's what you call it, the wrong place at the wrong time. Just outside of somebody they blow a tire and take you in them, but that's part of the deal that's what you call a champion in the making you look at robert Presley. all right we're back under green we're at lap 283 of the 400 to be run and it's rusty wallace earnhardt labonte Derek coke schrader marlin all up there dw walters in this lead lap we get ready for an exciting conclusion to the pontiac excitement 400. The Pontiac Excitement 400 is brought to you by Splitfire, the patented performance spark plug, and by Purilator. Legends live on Purilator. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Plasticoat Spray Paint, the winning finish. And by Exide Batteries. For great starts every day, replace your old battery with a powerful Exide battery. Available at Montgomery Ward stores. And by Pyroil, quality automotive formulas from the makers of Valvoline. For performance products, there's just one name, Pyroil. The heart of the Confederacy, Richmond, Virginia. Our steel aerial platform giving us this view. Richmond International Raceway. TBS giving you this view of Rusty Wallace as he continues to try to get himself a victory here on the 1995 season. He's leading over Earnhardt in second. Gary Labonte in third. Derek Cope maintaining fourth. Ken Schrader in fifth. Sterling Marlin is still sixth. Seventh, Darrell Waltrip. Long time since Walter has faced the victory. Rainy day in Darlington. 92 was the last time for him. Take a look at these four cars in that struggle further back. It's fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. All four. Get that number four position. Trevor so going to try to on the outside. I tell you, we're, we're, we're getting down to just show us your stuff now. And, uh, you know, there's only uh, 100 and, uh, 105 laps left. And, uh, you know, yeah, I wonder, I wonder if Daryl's got them sunglasses on. I know he wouldn't be able to drive in them things. He doesn't wear those much around the garage area, does he? Or? I don't blame him because everybody teases him. <laughs> well, Daryl's doing a pretty good job today. He's staying in there. Yeah, I tell you, you know, that, that's a great battle right there. And, uh, you know, not, not far behind him, Bobby Labonte is... Uh, running and Derek's been out running these cut, cars caught him down. all day now all of a sudden they're coming back to him maybe that sunshine's made his car change just a little bit or right. something but he pretty much uh, had these guys covered today but and that, Bobby Labonte looks Bobby good and, eight, and that yeah. 18 car down Here on the comes. inside he works a little better on the bottom 
But again, there's that opportunity to use a whole lot of racetrack. Take your choice, throw it in there, and see what comes up. And then we got Dick Trickle. That's a whole line of them right there. Man, it's amazing. It's a five-car battle for fourth position. Now, after watching those guys run side by side for, what, 30 laps out there, how can you say now they're going to go out and then now, they're, now we're down to that last... Now you really got to show what you've got. Looks to me like they've shown everything all afternoon. They're, they're showing it all day. You know, that's just the thing you, you say that, okay, if you got anything, let's show it. But but they, those guys right now are battling and racing as hard as they can race. If they could lead, they'd be leading right now. Hey, take a look at the Dick Trickle back here. That's the battle for 11 because he fights with the Mark Martin. 15 and 6, their own struggle. And it's a beauty. Dick Trickle and Mark Martin for 11. Starting to pick up a little bit of clear in the windshields at certain points of the racetrack, too, as the, as the day goes on here. At least that's what I'm going to add. And a little bit of clear uh, over here in the third and fourth turns. We haven't seen that sun in a while, so it's pretty sight, it's isn't it? Nice. <laughs> you get clear as well. But as you folks watch at home, what's your top speed in those straightaways, Ernie? How fast you get? 140? Uh, yeah, around there. I, I don't know exactly, but uh, it, it's fairly fast. It's gliding those things in there on this three quarter mile track. Back with the leaders. Here we go again. Here That's comes it. Earnhardt. Yeah, lap 102, they had that big go. Not ready to do it again. It's a familiar sight. We've been seeing that a lot today. And uh, you know, but the only thing is, is, is uh, we got Teddy Musgrave. That's uh, a lap down. But the leaders have not been able to put him back a lap down. So. Uh, you know, those guys are wanting to get him a lap down because they're saying that, man, if uh, Teddy gets back uh, and he gets the caution, he's going to be a contender. Got Terry Labonte just uh, coming in the end of our picture. And, uh, those three cars have been the dominant race cars today. And Terry Labonte also, he won the last race here, and so they, they must know the setup for him. You drove your first race here, what, in 87? I think so, yeah. yeah. Is this one of those tracks you write down as a favorite? Is, you, is this one of those tracks you write down as a stinker, as difficult? I mean, how do you how do you think about this place? Well, Richmond is one of the tracks that that I never had a lot of good luck at. I'd break or do this and do that, and uh, I remember we were on the floor and uh, we wound up fourth one day in a nighttime race here. So, oh, man, may, maybe Ernie can drive this place. And uh, so that was kind of the rumor that I, I couldn't really drive at Richmond. And, uh, so when I come up here with uh, Larry McReynolds, and here uh, Rick Mass, it looks like he's cut down a tire. Looks like probably the right rear, it looks like. And, uh, 14th yeah, he's in trouble. He was 14th just then. Well, he's had some tough luck. There's so many good runs go away for one reason or another. Now he's going to the garage. Uh, it must be a engine or rear end or something right they had, a, they had a tremendous amount of engine trouble but the big rumor was i couldn't drive at richmond and when i started driving for uh, robert yates and larry McReynolds and and all the the techs were having the team uh, that was the deal we came here we uh unloaded off the trailer ran good i ended up getting uh, one of my victories here at uh, richmond well the big three at richmond this afternoon earnhardt back in front of wallace then Levante, and there's musgrave Still trying to stay in that lead lap, just holding on. The fingernail kind of deal for him. They're on the oh, oh, he gets bopped. He tries to pick it up. He has to dirt track a little bit. He, he, he hung on her. Look at him. Yeah. Now it's going to be three wide. Now, he hadn't lost it yet. Some of that Franklin, Wisconsin dirt tracking by Musgrave in the 16. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Ted try to shut the football down there this time. Though. I don't believe he'll stay out there and get the else running room. I oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just a troublemaker. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was me. <laughs> that will do you. We're all looking forward to yeah. seeing you back out there. Getting all those letters written. Great stuff. Have either of you ever experienced I've been there anything time or two. like How this? About it, Ernie? <laughs> just, just about every time I race with Delaware. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, full chat. <laughs> Doesn't take much of a touch to do that. I mean, it's, you're so close to the edge in the first place. Just a little tap and, uh, boy, you're sideways. Oh, we're just having too much fun. we got to pause for a commercial, folks. <laughs> we're going to get back to this thing. This is, this is just great racing. We still have nine cars in the lead lap of the Pontiac Excitement 400 from Richmond International Raceway. Stay with us. Seven guys over the wall getting them back out, and you see Wallace out in a hurry. Those top drivers continue to fight it out. Labonte first, then Wallace, Earnhardt third. That's the pit action. Let's take a look at what brought out the caution. What brought out the caution? 
Watch right here. Oh, looks like Brett Bodine had his car broke loose. He had that wheel cut to the right to control his own car, and it just nudged up and tapped Spencer in the left rear, and Spencer just went right on around. Now, if you think that's exciting, watch what's coming up. There's the very spinning. Of it from this angle, but we just see Spencer spinning. Yep. And now watch what happens next. This will get your attention. There he is in the track. Ooh, reverse. Whoops. <laughs> Here come the leaders. Ooh. All squeezed by. Not hard. That's why they call him Mr. Excitement. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you call those other guys some of the best racers in the world. Right through there. You may call him Mr. Lucky, too. Right. Let's go to Steve Burns. We're standing by with Rick Mass. Rick, you guys just can't seem to finish one. Uh, well, at least we wasn't running real good today. I mean, last week at Rockingham, you know, we felt like we had a good shot of winning, and we got wrecked. But today, you know, I think we was like 14th or 15th. We kept getting the car better and better, but, you know, we was just going to try to finish 10th, 11th, or 12th, somewhere in there. But uh, I guess it broke. Something happened. Thank you, Rick. See Rick Mass back up in front. It seemed like he uh, just pulled into the garage area, and here he is already in the street clothes. That was a quick change. <laughs> Rock Bridge Badge, Virginia. Rick Mass. Okay, getting set for a restart. Now Ter Terry Labonte up in front. If you're wondering why, 17 and a half second pit stop put him there. Randy? Really sort of a question for up there for Chuck as far as and, uh, Chuck and Ernie Irvin. I saw fuel samples being taken here in Rusty Wallace's pit on this last stop. Is that common? Are they checking to make sure that fuel is all right in these cars in the last pit stop? Are you talking about NASCAR checking on fuel samples? Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's nothing that I've ever seen. That's news to me as well. I see you do it after the race to make sure that you didn't put, add something in there. But as, as far as your own team doing it during, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe there's suspicion with the Jeff Gordon problem earlier. Maybe they, somebody thinks something's uh, a problem. That's right, you know, because maybe Jeff Gordon's problem was maybe it was something in the fuel um, from the Unical stuff. You know, I, I've never seen a problem with that. But uh, yeah, the only time I've seen a problem is when somebody added their own little hot stuff to it. Uh, sometimes that'll lead up to inside of the fuel cell. Uh, <laughs> I've well, seen it. <laughs> I've never done it, but I have seen it. We're, we're checking it out, but there was oh. there was a problem in, in the 24 one time where they, they had uh, a fuel situation. But everybody else is running pretty well out here today. I, I question that. Mark Martin, we're in Mark Martin's car right now. He's right behind Dale Hardenberg. And um, he's got a good run going to try to get his lap back. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something Mark's been fighting for all day. And Mark Martin is that fourth place car in your picture, number six. And he is being shown in tenth place, one lap down to the leaders. And the leaders are, he stays up in first. And you have Wallace, followed by Earnhardt. Sterling Marlin is into fourth in the number four. Then Darrell Walter from Schrader is there next. They'll come down by us. That will complete lap number 318. Bobby Hamilton stays up in the lead lap. He's having a fine day. And then back there in tenth is that number six car. And Mark Martin giving it everything he's got as he tries to move around the three leaders for Bobby, Wallace, Earnhardt get back out there for a final fling at first place. 320 now complete in the Pontiac Excitement 400 led by Terry Labonte going for two in a row. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Steel Power Equipment, makers of a full line of outdoor power equipment. Powerful, easy to use and durable qualities you can depend on in steel territory. And by the official directory for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Your complete racing guide to order. Send $21.95 plus $6 shipping and handling to P.O. Box 101191, Atlanta, Georgia, 30384. And by Quality Care Service at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealer. Back at Richmond, packed house, 64-74, beg your pardon, thousand fans. Come April the 29th, the seats will go on sale to watch this kind of action under the lights, September 9th. And those seats ought to go in the flick of an eye. 
April the uh, 29th, they're going to put them on sale. September the 9th, we'll be here to see it. If you can't get a seat, watch it on TBS. I guarantee you, you're going to see another whale of a race. There's nothing quite like this Richmond track. Here you see the 43 of Bobby Hamilton, who is up to 7th. Right behind him in 8th is Derek Hope. He's having a great day out there for Allison Racing. And then Darrell Waltrip is there. And if anybody can give us any, shed any light on this fuel situation, Dick Berkman has the man in hand right now. And the man is Chocolate Myers. He used the gas band for Dale Earnhardt. Have they sampled your fuel? What's going on here? Well, we all have to run the same Unical fuel, and uh, every once in a while, NASCAR comes by and checks and just gets a little fuel sample from each of the teams and checks it out, make sure we're running legal, and we always are. You wouldn't think anybody would fool around with the fuel, would you, Chocolate? Well, you know, I, we don't. You know, we use Unical pump gasoline. That's all we need to use. It's the best stuff in the world. Uh, we just make sure nobody tampers with it. That's the story on Pit Road. I'll tell you, Ch Chocolate Myers must be getting a check from you, Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He'd make a great driver, wouldn't he? Yeah. Can't he tell stories? He's at least got a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're enjoying those new graphics, folks. We're trying to keep you up with the race more with a, a new set of graphics we're trying here today on TBS. But what we're seeing is what we've seen all day. Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, and Dale Earnhardt. They're trying to turn this thing into amongst just themselves as we're looking at only like 70 laps left. Uh, it's hard to say what's going to happen. But we're having such a great race further back in the pack. Look at Derek Coke giving it every... And Bobby Hamilton in there. Oh, there's Jimmy Derek, Spencer right Derek back at it again. lead lap all day long. Has, has Bobby Labonte right up in front of him. And there's John Andretti on the lead lap all day. And Bobby Hamilton. Both, that's all for position. All in the top ten. Actually, all in the top nine. As we look at nine cars still on the lead lap. And one of the folks we haven't talked too much about but has given it a great ride today is Jeremy Mayfield. He is showing one lap down that car number 98. Jeremy Mayfield is having a superb run. He's another young star you're going to be hearing more about. There he is. Jeremy Mayfield just running beautifully. His best run ever. His best career finish is 18th and that was last week when he ran at Rockingham, and look at him go now for Kelly Arborough up to 13th this afternoon. Good for you, Jeremy. Kind of a coincidence, the uh, former drivers that are now car owners have had their difficult times as car owners, but Kelly Arborough, Richard Petty, Bobby Allison, all three have uh, strong runs going with their cars today. It's good to see, Chuck, because uh, you know, one day we may have to be uh, uh, car owners. <laughs> You ready to be a car owner? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm ready to trade this microphone in for a steering wheel. Yeah. I think I'd rather listen to a uh, crew chief holler in my ear than some uh, producer. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad you didn't say another announcement. <laughs> All right, we're at 336, folks. We're getting down ready to decide this one this afternoon. Three folks up in front, three great drivers have given us this. Just a superb race with uh, Labonte up there and Wallace and Earnhardt. And we've got this other struggle on four or five cars a little further back. Let's go to Dick Bergen for this update. Well, Kyle Petty is wearing an unusual helmet device here. It's a composite kind of horse collar, and it runs underneath the uh, shoulder harness. You can see it here now. And on the sides, both sides, left and right, and also on the back are wires that hook into this thing. The object is to keep the driver's head on his shoulders. Now, it turns out that these guys can hit the wall so hard that their head actually tries to pull away from their shoulders causing neck injuries. It's called the Hans device. It's been around for a few years, but it's brand new to Winston Cup stock car racing. And this is the third time Petty has run it in all three races in 1995. And I'm rather wondering, Bernie Urban, you hit the wall awfully hard. Would this have helped you? Well, I tell you, it's one of the things that uh, a lot of doctors look at. And, uh, you know, we don't really know. We, we think it should have um, because the Hans device is uh, something really good. But then again, we, we've, we've seen some downfalls to it in, in different ways. It's real hard to put on. It's real hard to get in and out of the car with your helmet on and, and things. So uh, um, I know there's some other people that are actually coming up with some uh, other things uh, to maybe, maybe do the same job and make it more suitable for a Winston Cup stock car. You really have trouble getting in and out of that car with that helmet on, don't you? I wouldn't have no trouble right now getting in. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, the, the, the thing is right now is it, it's kind of hard. The windows have, have got a lot smaller and, and the bodies are a lot bigger and, and 
maybe we've gained a little too much weight and it's a, it's a little hard to get in those spots with your helmet on and that, that device on too. You guys, compared to the drivers 10 years ago, you're a whole lot slimmer, a lot trimmer. Looks like you work out a lot. What about it, Brown? Well, Ken, I think about every race driver today, even Dale Earnhardt is working out today. Uh, you know, part of his age, he's 43 years old. Uh, you know, it's just to keep the edge, uh, the competition's so tough. I would say probably 90% of the drivers out here do at least some form of, of a workout to uh, stay in top shape and help for the licks against the wall as well. Top three out here in top shape right now. They continue to be Terry Labonte right out in front with Wallace in second, Earnhardt banging away in third, coming back another time. Don't go away. This is going to get good. With Chuck Bowne and Ernie Irvin, Ken Squire top side. Actually, Ernie Irvin, John Boy, and Billy, but that, that's not true. But, uh, we're having a great time, and we hope you are wherever you are today watching this Pontiac Excitement 400. Down on pit road, assisting. Steve Burns is down there, Randy Pemberton, Dick Bergen, Rick Benjamin. And we're watching this man. All eyes are on the guy who won here under the lights last September, trying to make it two in a row. And right there in second spot is now Earnhardt with third spot Wallace as they continue to dice that position, swap it back and forth. Look at uh, Bobby Labonte in the 18, flying through the field, just not giving an inch to anybody. He's in the sixth position with Derek, Derek Cope breathing down even yep. seventh there. They've just swapped that again the, between those two. 12 and 18 have swapped that spot. They've been in contention all day long, just not... No, a little, just a little bit behind the leader. It's not quite close enough to get up there and race for the lead, but they've been running through it all day. Looks like Earnhardt's actually running uh, Terry Labonte down a little bit now. Or actually, um, uh, uh, yeah. Let's take a look at how Earnhardt got around Wallace. Let's go back about three laps. How about this, Irvin? Uh, this is a familiar sight. We've been watching it all day. Looks like uh, Rusty pushed up a little bit, and Dale just... Um, come across on the bottom. We're back at lap 3.52. You know, that five car is the same one we've seen run so good here last September, but it was a hot night race then. Now it's a very cold daytime show, but it's like the setup's getting done anyway. Randy has a comment for us. Well, it's probably pretty obvious to you guys up in the booth. Rusty is now tight. He's got a little push as he comes off a two right here. The car just, just doesn't want to turn for him. You remember earlier, they adjusted a half a pound of air pressure in the right rear, trying to loosen him up just a little bit. He's as tight as he's been all day long. They're struggling right now. That's the problem. You know, you come down to that last pit stop, they may not get another opportunity to come in and fix it. Everybody's been taking off fuel main tires. Although the cars are really going to be bad at the end if they have to finish on this same set of tires. It'll be a long run on them. But that last little adjustment is the one that makes you win or get or whatever. Ernie, big difference between running here at night and in the daytime? You know, there's not a lot of difference. You know, this racetrack seems to be a lot more forgiving. And, and um, you know, the, basically the same setup. Uh, you know, when I won here... Kenny Wallace ran really close to the same setup. You know, you might have a little piece of rubber in the right front as far as it's for the, to strengthen the right front spring, or, or maybe a little bit different, but, uh, you know, it just doesn't seem to change much. Optically, it looks so much faster when you see them run like they will on September 19th. Let's go down to Steve Burns. Ken, I talked to some of the guys here in the pits, Gary D. Hart, Rick Hendrick. They've got bad news for Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. Terry called in about 20 laps ago and said the tires and the car absolutely perfect. Boy, isn't that a great call? Hello? Have you ever said that in Victory a lane? <laughs> I've never had anything absolutely perfect. Well, you better win if it is. That's yeah. all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> or own the car. And, and, and I think we just now catch Dale Earnhardt to just about pop Terry in the body. So Dale Earnhardt's tires must be absolutely perfect, too. A little hold up in traffic there for Terry in the body. Yeah. Which is going to fail to close right in on him, but... It's hard to still black two right here. Right 40 laps left. But it's not over yet. It's going to be exciting. As Michael Waltrips gets lapped, and we're coming up on Bill Elliott. Well, Terry Labonte does not want to make it exciting. He wants to get out here and scoot away from everybody. But guess what? 
Here's Earnhardt with the same intention. It's the Pontiac excitement 400, so uh, that's, that's why it's so exciting. There's your leader, Terry Labonte, who won in the night race here last September. Coming around Bill Elliott, there's the second place man. And closing in, it's Earnhardt, down to about four car lengths. That's at lap 358, and there's third place. Rusty Wallace, in third. You see the rookie lap car right behind him. Randy LaJoy behind, behind uh, Rusty. Running in 28. Trying to make the move on Michael Waltrip. And there is that number six car. Waiting on the four car now to come through. Big gap here. Yep. Sterling Marley stays for We'll give it a termination or we'll give it to Mark Martin right now. Down two laps, he's made up one. It's been tough to make up anything here at Richmond. I um, think Mark only went down one lap anyway, so uh, he's just been been down one the whole yep. time. Well, they had him at two early on, and, and, they, and they caught him up one. Huh? Yep, they had him at two for 34 laps. Now take a look further back. Oh, two, 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 four, 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 four. Still at it. There you go. Bobby the body, Lake Speed, trying to get into Lake Speed. Lake Speed in that nine car is in 17th position. A lap or two down, two laps down. That spam light? <laughs> yes, sir. Right behind him, he's still out there surviving. Quarter of a lap back from here is Hamilton in the 43 car. And let's not lose track of the fact that he's staying in that lead lap and that Waltrip has fallen to the tail end of the lead lap. He's back. There's Bobby Hamilton still working the petty number 43. And then a couple of spots behind is the 17 Darrell Waltrip staying in the lead lap as we go down toward the finish. Getting around. Don't need to check. 87 got hammered early in this race, but it stayed out there and kept on running. It's running 341 laps complete as the field is at 364. So we'll pause, take this break. We expect there'll be one more assault and a big one. It'll be put out by Earnhardt as he goes after Terry Labonte. Watch and see. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway. Looking down on this beautiful facility from our steel aerial platform on TBS Sports. Getting down to the final few laps here today. Will Terry Labonte be able to hang on? He's got his hands full at the moment. We'll get back to the battle on track in a moment. I want to bring you up to date the IndyCars, the Cars BBG IndyCar World Series opening up their season at Miami. The street course uh, by the bay there today. Jacques Villeneuve, his second career victory, only his second season in IndyCars in the players' car winning today. Mauricio Guzelman, a surprise finish in second. Bobby Rahal had so many problems the last couple of years. He gets third. Scott Pruitt, his first run for Patrick Racing on the Firestone tires. Maybe a tire war in IndyCar this year. Pruitt on Firestones gets fourth. Christian Fittipaldi finishes fifth. His first start for Derek Walker today coming out of the Formula One ranks. Maybe it won't be a Penske year after all. Let's see what happened to Al Jr. and Emmo. They, they did not finish well at all. Al Unser Jr., 15 laps down. Emerson Fittipaldi, several laps in arrears also were told. So the IndyCar is getting their season under way and a surprise winner to get that season started in Miami. Back on the track, Terry Labonte trying to put Daryl Waltrip one lap down as we work toward the conclusion here at Richmond International Raceway. Ken? Waltrip in the eighth position and here comes Terry tearing up the inside of turn four about to put him a lap down. And they just passed the Bobby Hamilton machine and put him a lap down as well right behind Daryl. Looking bulletproof now. Terry Labonte the end of the final moments. Eight car got a consultation flag. They just brought it in. And back out again comes Jeff Burton. Dick Bergeron standing by with Richard Childress. Well, 25 laps to go. Can you catch Levani? You know, he's awful strong right now. Our car just don't work as good up high in his traffic. We just have to see he's awful strong. Caution flag help. Well, I don't know. We just, I'd like to race and see what he comes out there. Richard Childress. What, what, what a guy he is. 
never forget after uh, you got hurt, Ernie, he was willing to put out a car and put your number on it so that Robert Yates could stay up in the points. And I just thought that was, that's not a move of more than just a sportsman. That's just a move of a whale of a guy. Yeah, I tell you, you know, it was uh, something for, for a, an actual car owner. And we were battling him in, in the points. Yep. So uh, that, that was a, a great uh, venture for him. Well, here's Earnhardt, back in second. And it appears that he doesn't have any more that he can give out here. But again, Terry Labonte, as we saw him last September, is as stout as anything. Although, let's see here. Did that look like he got caught up just a little coming off that corner? I don't no. know. I, I, I think Dale Earnhardt's giving it everything he's got, and Terry Labonte's giving it everything he's got. And Terry just appears right now to, to have a little more. The car seems to be getting through the, the middle of the corner a little better than Dale's. And he likes having a few cars between, lap cars between himself and Earnhardt as a buffer. That's always a pretty sight. If you do happen to make a little wiggle or slip or whatever, it's not going to cost you the lead. We're getting ready to come out. 20 laps to go, so, um, you know, not far to go. Yeah, time. It's time. Yeah, it's time. If he had anything, and uh, he would do it now. If you're just joining us yesterday, Terry Labonte came home in second in the Grand National Race. Kenny Wallace won it. Getting down to the bottom of this one. Let's get back inside of Dick Pickle for a moment in car 15. Boy, look at that one. All torn up on the left side. Still out there. He's in 13th spot. He's a couple of laps down, but he's still giving that Bud Moore quality care motorcraft for it. A good stout run. He's been up there in the top 15 most of the afternoon. I wish they'd show that camera and look at him. There, there he is. is. Now watch. He'll look at us here in a minute. <laughs> See? There he is. Yeah. He heard you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, he's taking a little drink under the green flag there. He's yeah. Pulled up that little water hose and getting some fresh cold water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dick's been known to smoke a few yeah. cigarettes. Uh, if Turner that was Curtis yeah. Turner, you'd know that he wasn't reaching for the water bottle. <laughs> yeah. I think he only smokes Winston's. Uh, definitely. Yeah. He's the hero of a lot of folks. 53 years old, and he says, hey, with this ride, I'm 34. He said, I went fishing, and I just caught the big one when he got that ride with Buttonmore. Back up with the leader, Terry Labonte, zeroing in on win number 13. We're at lap 383. To be win number two in a row, that's, a, that's a, a feat that I don't think a whole lot of people's had. Had three wins last year for Rick Hendrick. In his first year with him. That, yep. That's what's what exciting. Now he's dialed in and used to these guys. He could have a very good year and be a contender for the title. And, it, and two, you also got to realize Rick Hendrick's the average here. They won the race last week, had the pole there, and then all of a sudden got the car that's uh, you know, looking like they may win it here. Darrell Waltrip going to lap down, stays eight. So Terry Labonte stays up in front. Earlier, Dick Bergen had a chance to talk to Terry about coming back to Richmond after last year's win. What do you bring from a win when you come back to the same racetrack again and the weather is so very different? No, the, <laughs> the same truck, <laughs> same people, but uh, anytime you go back to a racetrack, uh, things have changed, you know. The cars are a little bit different, uh, the rules are a little bit different, the tires are different, so uh, you just kind of come back like you were and make some adjustments. As, you can. as he's going right now, he's headed back for victory lane. A lot of years of racing on this guy. Terry Labonte, those great years with Billy Hagan, then some hard years with the Hagan racing team. Billy Hagan brought him along out of Corpus Christi, Texas. The first time I saw him was Talladega. A couple of drivers he brought over from the Texas area. Manning was another. But that same wiggle either. He just keeps that five car right in that same line every lap. Put the stopwatch on him, he's, you know, within a hundredth of a second every lap. It's just very smooth. And for the moment, Waltrip a lap down, and now Bobby Labonte's running very slowly, bottom of the track. You can see him limping down into turn number one in seventh position. That's too bad. Twelve laps to go. He's been in the lead lap all day. No idea what's wrong here, but it looks, looks like it could be an engine problem. 
Does not look like he's under power. I think he's coasting as well. Younger brother, Terry Labonte, Bobby Labonte, coming in. Drive train, they say, is going away on the Gibbs Racing Team car, the Interstate Batteries machine. That, that's hurt. But you run hard all day long, and you're up there in the money. You're going to get a good finish, and then doing 10 laps in the finish, something happens. It's, that's no fun. And that's what they're putting on him right now. Ten fingers up from the flag stand. Ten to go. There's Jeremy Mayfield still hanging in. Plenty of time here to... Darrell Waltz has unlapped himself from Terry. Yep. I don't know if Terry's just being a little bit more cautious since it's so close to the end, or maybe Darrell's finding a little better line around the racetrack to make him a little faster. 16th place, Morgan Shepard. I'm sure Terry, Terry's not just, you know, backing off. No. Uh, Dale Earnhardt's uh, right there. He's the next car to Terry. Uh, They've got about 80 laps on this time. Mm -hmm. I can imagine they're getting to be a handful of them. Yeah, they sure are difference between first and second looks about 10 car lengths out of turn number two. There you see Terry Labonte and again he's being shadowed. Oh what a shot. There's Bobby Labonte thinking about what it might have been and looking forward <laughs> to Atlanta. He's going to jack it up and take a look. He's going to jack his own car up and figure out what the problem is. That, oh it must be trying to roll on him. Frustration. We've all had that feeling. Yes, we have. Not not many laps to go here. There's uh, six laps to go. You see Terry right there. He's only about three car lengths in front of him. What's Bobby Allison's great line? One winner and the rest losers. All the all the others. All the rest are just others. Yeah. Second place is the first loser or something like that. Yeah. 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 No no fear has got a shirt like that. Look at Earnhardt coming up. He's cut that 10 cars down to five car length advantage. And he's still coming on. Five to go. He's driving against the heart. It's sliding up the racetrack quite a bit, but that's all you can do now is do yep. or die. You've yep. got to get by the five any way you can. He lost a couple of car lengths that time in turn two. There's the interval between the five and the three. Chevrolet's back on top again. Rusty Wallace is Ford, lies third on this one. Four to go. Remember the nine car, Lake Speed, shown as 14th, a lap down. Couple laps down, two down. Earnhardt still giving it everything. There's not much left on those tires. Okay, I'm looking over at the pit, and you know, the five, five car guys are all standing on the wall. You know, uh, it's ready, not over till it's over. You know, <laughs> anything can happen. Uh, for sure. I've had things stay on the white flag lap. I mean, you never know. Boy, Earnhardt took it down to the inside and looked like he scrubbed off some speed, and he's slowing down. The 90s up beside him. I think his tires are yeah, about he's gone. He's just run the car so hard and a desperate chance to get up there. White flag is out. Final lap for Terry Labonte going for two in a row in Richmond International Raceway. The 90 gives it a good shot. Mike Wallace easing by and those leaders have worn out everything on those race cars. Limping but coming home in first. It's Terry Labonte, followed by Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace here at Richmond International Raceway. And that means that coming up, we're back with you in September. Happy through down there. September the night, Terry Labonte will go for three in a row on this track under the lights of Richmond International Raceway. Second straight win for Hendrick Motorsports. Gordon last weekend, Labonte here at Richmond. We gotta figure out what springs he had on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> he had the right ones, I promise you that. That was a, that was a good performance. Here's Steve Burns. Rick Hendrick, great day today. Uh, bring home a winner, two cars in the top five. It's a, it's a heck of a deal. Uh, we're real proud of the guys. They worked hard, you know, for the 
whole organization to win these two back-to-back -back and turn to drive like this today. Hey, Jeff had a problem, but Kenny ran a good race, and we're just real thankful that Chevrolet and Kellogg's, everybody, we we're really tickled to death. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ken Schrader home in fourth place this afternoon. So it is a great day for Hendrick Racing. A tough day for Jeff Gordon, but you know he's going to be back in this thing before too long. And we'll be back to meet the winner, Terry Lavati of Corpus Christi, Texas, after we pause for these messages here from Richmond International Raceway. The five-point harness has become standard equipment on all stock cars, an innovation all of us drivers are really thankful for. Here's how it works. The left side belt goes over your left shoulder, the right side belt goes over your right shoulder, then it's connected with a sternum strap. The left side belt on the bottom goes over your left hip, and the right side belt goes over your right hip, and then they, they join together with a crotch belt. This is how the five-point harness works. Dick Bergeron down in the Pure Later winner's circle here at Richmond. Let's meet the winner, Terry Labonte. Well, Terry Labonte, until today, the furthest back anyone had started in one at this new racetrack in Richmond was 19th. You started all the way back in 24th. How'd you pass all these cars? Well, I don't ever qualify too good, so I'm used to starting back that far. But uh, I'll tell you what, our Kellogg Chevrolet ran super today. Uh, it was a great win for us. And, uh, you know, uh, I, this is for one of our crew members, Mike Slattery. His, his dad passed away. and. Uh, our best wishes are with them, and uh, it was just a great run for all the guys in the Kellogg's team. Uh, can't say enough about my owner, Rick, over here. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And all the crew, they just did a great job. Rusty and Dale Earnhardt went at it hammer and tong the entire race. You seem to be just sort of watching that. Did their racing together help you? It did. It did. They raced each other harder, I think, than they raced me, you know, and so it kind of used their tires up a little bit, and that worked in my favor. Uh, when I was running third behind them, they were racing each other pretty hard there, and then I was able to get by them, and then... Our crew had a great pit stop the last time we came out leading the thing, and uh, I didn't know if we could hold them off or not. Uh, I just didn't know. Earnhardt was awful strong, Rusty was strong, and I knew it was going to be close. The weather was so different today than in all of the practice and testing that you had done. Did that help you? Did it hurt you? How did it play into your race? Well, I don't, I don't know. It was the same for everybody, so uh, I guess it really wasn't that big of a factor. How hard did you run today? As hard as I could. <laughs> we ran hard. Randy Pemberton he is with, Dale, I think, Dale Dale just uh, giving some interviews in here. Dale, a uh, heck of a run. Couldn't run him down, I guess. Well, yeah, we was doing all we could do. You know, we, I, I thought we had a good race car from the start. The car come right to the front, and that's what it's all about. But, uh, but uh, still, just wasn't the car I wanted there at the end. It was a little too tight, and uh, I wore the right front out, pushed it away. So we'll try one again next week, see if we can second them, first them the next time. Did it change much during the race for you, the car itself? No, the car stayed pretty consistent, but it's just that little bit of tightness in the middle I was worrying with. One other thing, uh, you came over the radio one time, you thought you might have had a broken spring, you about gave Richard a heart attack. Well, I did, and something went through the engine or something, it sort of missed and slowed down, and then it came come back and started running again, so I don't know what happened. Okay, that's Taylor Earnhardt. Another good run for the guy that's uh, going for his eighth Winston Cup championship. Steve Meal or Steve, Steve Burns? <laughs> Well, Rusty, uh, a good day at the office, not a win, but you accomplished a lot. Yeah, we did accomplish a lot. We got a third place out of it, and uh, I just really thought I was going to win the thing. You know, <laughs> a beggar's can't be choosy. After two DNFs, I'm real happy to finish third today, and uh, and it was a neat, it was a good, fun race. Had, I had a good time out there today. Yeah, Rusty and, uh, I mean, uh, Ernie and Chuck up in the booth were uh, remarking about how much fun it looked like you were having with Dale early in the race. Yeah, he would run, he got on the bottom of the racetrack. I was a little tight at that point. And so when he got underneath me, I just got on the top. And as Ernie and all the guys up in there know that uh, you start losing bite on the bottom when you get a car on the outside of you. So I just ran her up top. I guess we run about 25, 30 laps like that. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I, I kept trying to think about the car, how to fix it, how to make it better. But uh, I believe we just mischose a right rear shock today that really, really aggravated me and killed me. And uh, we still got to get our shock program better. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you. And so Terry Labonte, who was the Jeff Gordon of the late 70s, remember when he finished fourth in his first Winston Cup race in 1978 down at the Southern 500 at Darlington. Back then he was 21. Still out there, still looking strong. Three wins last year. Looks like he could do even better this year. Terry Labonte, the winner of the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond, where we'll have more after these messages. 
Average speed today, 106.405 miles per hour, very close to the mark that Davy Allison established for the record in 1993 of 107.7 for this event. Well, there you see Victory Lane and some of the 70,000-plus that have enjoyed the day beginning to saunter out of this racetrack and get ready to move on to Atlanta or come back here next September for that great night race. Any, any thoughts about what you saw up here today, Ernie Irvin? That sure makes me want to get back into that race car. But, um, you know, th this was an exciting race. Um, you know, the fans got their money's worth, and, uh, you know, it was exciting. Terry Labonte, um, you know, I was in the hospital some when he when he won this race. And, uh, you know, Terry's uh, are going to be something to, to actually have to watch the rest of this year. I understand we can uh, get down with the man who had a great fourth place run today, Ken Schrader. Steve's standing by with him now. Steve Burns? Thank you, Ken. Uh, not a spectacular run, but you sure got the job done. <laughs> uh, yeah, Budweiser car ran good all day. Uh, I don't like these short tracks. I don't know why, but Terry Labonte has helped me a bunch last year, and uh, I told him when he left the shop, just put the same stuff under that's underneath Terry's car, and I learned how to drive it. <laughs> all right, thanks, Ken. <laughs> sure did a good job with it with a great finish in fourth place today sterling marlin coming home fifth more from richmond coming up here on tbs after this the pontiac excitement 400 is brought to you by pontiac we are driving excitement by cold filtered miller genuine draft by haviland formula 3 motor oil and by autozone the best parts in auto parts